That's Heck awesome. yeah, we did it. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> it's always always a moment when I go to click the uh, you know go live button, and I think to myself, is it going to work, or is it all going to just crash and burn, and then we're going <laughs> to scramble. And uh, so, so far, we did it. We're four for four, I guess, right? So, yeah, it's great to see everyone's smiling faces again. It's been like a whole month since we played this game. I'm oh, just gone. <laughs> Hi, Joe. We're already lost someone. <laughs> I'll like, right, see you next month. Bye. To uh, <laughs> the late 90s. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, so, I love well, that song. We're, uh, <laughs> we're back to Veil Breakers, right? A little cool fifth ed adventure game supporting Surfrider Foundation. So, uh, hell yeah, grip it and rip it. Hell yeah. uh, who, did it who did it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we have an emote for that? We uh, we do if you donate, actually. Speaking of donating, right? So, yeah, if you donate, the uh, McElroy brothers will yell, hell yeah, grip it and rip it into my ears at rather absurd volumes. Uh, no one else can hear it. But when it happens, it scares the living shit out of me every time because I'm never expecting it. Um, it's even better when I log on to check for OBS updates and old donations catch up and I'm not expecting it at all. <laughs> and I just fall out of my chair when my computer starts screaming at me. So uh, you should donate is the point. So sort of donate in the in the chat. Right. But we'll continue our, um, our adventure. Our heroes. <sighs> Man, I've been through a lot in a very short amount of time. They were killed. They were brought back in these weird clay monstrosity bodies. Managed to get back to uh, where their original bodies were, and through a combination of some help and some uh, some help from some uh, strange beings, kind of a stardust entity and a, an inevitable, jump back into their own bodies, and are now on their way back into the city of Neverwinter, which has fallen under the control or assault or something of a weird, dark force masquerading. Uh, hell yeah, grip it and rip it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as their friend Suri from a wedding they attended earlier. She's yesterday in game. <laughs> it's been like a crazy day and a half for you guys. So having fought this absurd corpse flower, right? Imagine to get your bodies back. Uh, still kind of tired, wounded, right? Fighting off a bunch of hellhounds, hearing more bane in the distance. You go all ran, right? To go find yourself a good place to hunker down for the rest of this night to get a good solid rest. Yeah, I think we were aiming for a spot just outside the city. Like we didn't want to break in and try to find a hotel. We're yes. trying to find like a cave overlooking the town. Uh, if there's a bear in the cave, we're okay with that. Uh, so you have a couple options, right? So you're on that cliff side, kind of heading up into um, into the city. There are, as you know, some buildings and stuff on the outskirts of the city. Before you get into the more dense population areas, there are like uh, small farm shacks or small checkpoints. Uh, there are just like little storage silos you could probably get into if you want to venture that far in you could of course go for you know trying to find like you said a alcove in the cliff somewhere to try to rest right um what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask the party to give me a uh group ability check right we haven't done one of these yet but basically what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to ask you Hey, tell me what your character is doing in this moment to try to find shelter and, sur and survive, right? And this is going to be on you to tell me what cool ability you're using and why it's relevant, right? So um, the only catch is you can't use the same ability twice. So you got to kind of vary what skills you're using to search for a place. So... It is dark. You're on this cliffside. You hear the baying of hellhounds in the distance, right? Uh, you're working over this adverse terrain, and you can see little dots of light in the distance. Uh, you could find some houses or something to take shelter in. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'll go first because you set me up with the words adverse terrain. That makes <laughs> it easier to sell this. Yeah. Uh, because remember, I am a mountain dwarf. I mm -hmm. want to be underground. 
Uh, and so I am looking for a cave, and I'm using my athletics to get through this adverse terrain, climbing this hill, looking for a goddamn cave. Makes sense to me. Go ahead and roll it. So Balan kind of leading the way, uh, making sure that one like falls off loose terrain or like falls into a pit somewhere. Ooh. Are you? Sh- am I sharing my rolls with you? Can you see this? Uh, I cannot. Did you roll in a uh, Albay Rodeo? That's a, that's a, yes. That's a twenty-six. Oof! That's a good roll. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there yeah. we go. Now, now it's shared. Cool. Yeah, with your uh, with your dark vision and your experience dealing with like cliff and mountainous terrain, you're fine. You lead the party uh, effortlessly through this bad terrain, and uh, there are no issues. Right. Okay. We don't have to use the cave if people don't want to, but that's where I'm comfortable with. I want to be underground. Mm-hmm. There are a couple alcoves that you do find. Uh, they're shallow, but you know you could the four of you could, could easily cram into one, and uh, it wouldn't be comfortable, but it would be shelter. Uh, if we're looking for, we have found cave stuff. Um, itself would be totally fine wild shaping for a while to see if I can find like a source of water. Um, so if we're going to go with uh, maybe a nice like uh, the first like animal that came to my head was like a fossa type like you know sort of um, they're from Madagascar it's like almost like it's like a cat weasel bit okay, thing, cool, cool. but like it has a wonderful sense of smell and it can see in the dark. Um, like they're cute but also terrifying um which is just you know apt uh that sounds like a cat weasel yes yeah uh so the like all right like i'm gonna sniff out some some water and see if we can find some like you know maybe a nice little like underground pond with some freshwater fish etc um so fascinating yeah Uh, (laughs) i'm i'm fine with like wild shape is wild shape but i can roll survival for the looking for you know source of or nature I don't know, your choice uh i'll do this since you're burning a, a point of wild shape to do this uh roll at advantage for whichever one you want sure wild shape okay. also let's say survival okay and it's since this is more active uh looking and not like i don't know is poison ivy poisonous can i eat it uh great so i got a natural 20 for one of them so we're gonna go okay. with um, which That'll makes it a total of a 27 yeah um Jeez, good roll. Okay. I don't just find underground fish, I find delicious fish. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> very, very good roll. Okay. Like eyeless trout. Okay, yeah. Uh, Odette or Bella, what are you doing? Y'all are off to a great start. I mean, what's the old adage when you're lost in the wilderness? Step one is find shelter and step two is find water? Sounds right. <laughs> And, uh, oh, you want to go? Gotta persuade the, uh, terrain to give me some fresh water. See how that goes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm just gonna die inside, like, "Mm." (laughs) please, nature. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) No. The persuade Um, check is actually on the GM. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would like to aid another with that persuade roll because. I'm not <laughs> okay. okay, but but Andy, I think you're failing to take into account just how persuading Joe and I are. It's Ellen Valen walking to like a, 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 a cave. They are perfectly happy for the night. The two of you just fall off the cliff and die. <laughs> I don't want to say I have a plus eleven or anything like that to help her. Persuade the environment to get food. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. is difficult. However, comma, if you were going to push your way closer towards the outskirted area of town, uh, there's a possibility that there are people there you could persuade to let you stay in a barn or some stuff, right? Mm. So that would be applicable. But if you're staying on the cliff side, that's a little more difficult. Yeah, let me see. I mean, you can get him convince us to give, like... I don't know what goes good with fish. I was going to say, if somebody wants to get food, I, I think we've yeah. got shelter, we've got water, food is next. I got, yeah. 
fish. Spread the word of our party that's totally going to save the town if they can donate a steak and some pie. <laughs> ale. And ale. And, and breakfast beers. We're not necessarily heroes for hire, but we do work for donations. <laughs> Yeah, what do you got? Nothing that seems immediately relevant. Um, <laughs> let me... Do you have any cool feats? Yeah. Uh, the, the, I'm, I'm trying to figure out... I, I can talk to animals, and I'm trying to figure out if there's a cool way I can, like... Persuade an animal? Persuade a little animal to, like... I'll buy know, that. You, you know, we could we could you all use a good rest. It would be great if somebody could guard this cave for us. Oh, I mean, I don't sleep, but Neither that's what I, I could that's do. True. I could that's I true. could convince a local uh, local wolf pack to like tag team with me for the evening and be like, just let me know if something's coming our way because we're like best buds now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. You know what? This is silly enough to work. I'm into it. Um, <laughs> like, I'll just be here in this cave if you see anything, like, you know, predatory heading this way. Just give me a little heads up, buddies. Look, there are enough uh, bodies not too far away that there are large prey animals out because uh, they're following the scent of, you know, tasty, tasty burnt meat. Um <clears throat> it so, yeah. was our gift to you, so... <laughs> uh, you cast Speak with Animal. Now, unfortunately, where you were at, it was kind of, kind of hard to find some wolves up on this terrain, but easily find a bunch of, like, owls and birds of prey that are perfectly happy to get involved in uh, in this scenario, right? Or kind of flying around looking at the disturbances, and I think a couple of them land nearby, and you can cast the spell. Cool. The Twitch feed would like us to use a squirrel army. Squirrel army. Um, Just remember, well, for donations, we'll do damn near anything. That's true. For money, <laughs> I can be persuaded to do that. Uh, but yeah, Bella, go ahead and uh, roll persuade as you talk to these owls. <laughs> Happily. Let me figure out what screen this one. <laughs> I need <sighs> pure shenanigans. Sorry. Um, can I roll an owlbear? Is that a thing I can do? You can roll in the dice tray if you like, or you can just roll um, the d20. So I believe you. Now, yeah, when you in get the upper, that, yeah, in the upper left, the... there's a little window symbol. Yeah. It's very small. When you get six nat 20s in a row, I'm going to ask the like questions. A, like a tray, I guess, is what I thought it looked like. Like it's, a a little, it's a square within a square, rectangle within a square. Sure. Dice tray sounds right. I'll and if you, click the, if you click the little globe symbol at the bottom, it makes it public so the rest of us can see. Oh, oh well, that is tempting. Okay. I like it because like just now when I rolled a 19 on my strength check, I was like, I don't want to seem like I'm cheating on the first roll of the day. <laughs> nah. Where do you see a globe? I do not see a globe. It's the very bottom symbol in the dice tray. Then. Oh, in the dice tray. Okay, fine. There we go. I got a 14. I see it. But All my right. persuade is a plus seven, so Ooh, I'm 21. persuasive as fuck. Three rolls over 20. That's baller. We're starting uh, strong. Yes, the owls are perfectly happy um, to give you a little Except bit of a heads up, right? The is like going and grabbing bits of fish and then just like tossing them while Bella's making this meal. <laughs> yeah. In fact, for trading, in fact, uh, trading some of that fish for them, just keeping an eye on the area is probably the best move there. I need, like, we need um, the go-between. Bella's providing the, like, translation service from, you know, one culture of strange animal to the other. It's fine. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, so far you're actually in, like, a very nice, you find a, a slightly deeper cave and you know there's a bunch of there's a bunch of rivers that run through uh never winter right the little hot springs down there so you find one of the caves with like uh not necessarily a incredibly hot runoff but there's like a small pool inside there's some fish inside and it's, it's a little more comfortable and it's not nearly as cold as it would be in a little cabin area 
So cool. And you have your uh, your owl friends looking out for you. All right. Odette. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I think Odette, uh, traumatized by this whole adventure and, and just wants to get back to uh, um, to see Cole, her, her, her love. Uh, she just wants to maybe get back to the theater and she definitely wants to see Lady Alora, her undying ancestor, who has promised to come to the city. Uh-huh, she did. So um, I think Odette, but she is realizing everybody is more adventuresome than she is and uh, is do- doing stuff in order to like make sure that like camp happens. She's like, ah, yes. Eh, I will, uh, I will do what I can um, to make sure that there are no threats coming our way. And do we need to stay on this cliffside, or are? Oh no! Oh, oh we lost Joe. <laughs> oh no! And Odette vanishes. Yeah. What a twist! Oh. Odette broke the veil. Yeah, she's gone to the ethereal, the ethereal plane. I love your coffee mug, by the way. It's a big old owl. That makes me happy. I did not notice that earlier, but it's very on theme. Yeah, if someone's yeah. going to pop into invisibility randomly, it would uh, be Let's day. see if I can get that on camera. My my animals are fox and owl, so my girlfriend got a fox mug and an owl mug to keep Aww. your home. Cute. Yes. Because Verizon screwed my internet sideways, I am playing at a guest location tonight. <laughs> guest locations are the best locations. Not really. <laughs> I'd be, I have all this set up now. I'd be very, very upset if I had to move it. So, but uh, well, hopefully, so let's see. Let's see, uh, let's see if Joe's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Just what's going on with that. It would have been real. Like it would have been real bad if you've been like, "Let's see if Joe's alive," and then like something terrible had actually happened, and we were just like, "Oh no!" Oh, there been an earthquake, and his building the, burned down. Yeah, on the off chance that something disastrous had happened, we'd feel awful. There he is! Yay! Uh, you are not on the overlay. You're not appearing. Yeah, he moved so. over to. The- the different side of the screen on me. <laughs> I hate that. So, that is weird. Why are you not actually appearing on the screen, but you're in... If you could be so kind. Yeah, if you could please log out and log back in, that should hopefully fix the issue. I was thinking some, like... Ready Player One nonsense, where it's like, I can't take out the character, so I'll just take out the player. (laughs) We are professionals. Professionals. See, I told you, if one thing doesn't go wrong per stream, I get weird. So this is the one thing. I was waiting to see when it would occur. Yeah. So, now the real problem would be if Joe logs back in, he does not appear in his little box. I will be confounded. Well, you did say uh, you were worried about the fact that we didn't have any tech problems at the start. So, mm-hmm. yeah, here's your here's your one. No, the chat good. says there it is. We fixed it. Hey, the, the chat said that they couldn't hear him when he was back on for a second there either. Can, can oh, test one two one two. That uh, seems. I can hear you fine. Seems gooder. There he goes. Chat says you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, chat. All uh, good. Th- thank you. Thanks for always having my back. I appreciate it. Um, Odette. Uh, I, um, the old turn on and off again, right? Yes. Uh, Odette, uh, uh, going back, um, says, um, I I think I could probably uh, look around. Uh, my eyesight is pretty good, I have been told. And um, I can see if there are, are any threats or perhaps... Um, anything around that might be helpful but are we married to staying here on a cliffside i mean there are so many hospitable houses uh, back where we you know we could just go back to town are we married to this the problem is that town is full of evil things trying to kill everyone no, where we are where we we have valian <laughs> he is here he has soloed two hellhounds on his own i I don't, and we have our able bodies. 
bodies back? I'd like to sleep through the night. <laughs> she says, well, I would like my silk pillows. <laughs> and then <laughs> she, um, uh, she, she understands it's a lost battle. So she, uh, Odette, um, uh, uh, just kind of like does a little plie and uh, pirouette and um, everything around her goes silent. Um, and she starts just kind of agilely leaping through the forest and keeping her eyes open. And uh, she realizes, like she has like a little light with her. She does have like dark vision, but she realizes her vision is very keen. Um, and uh, she kind of rubs her eyes a little bit uh, and starts peering through the forest and kind of ranging, although she wouldn't know the word for it. Um, and just to see if there are any kind of threats out there. And I'm using my uh, special darkness sight. Very cool. Uh, one one admin note. You're um, able to move up and down, but you're on this like kind of cliffside area, right? Yes. So you still have uh, the ability to see all these different things. You're moving around different areas of the cliff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like some scraggle foliage and nonsense uh but yeah you can scraggle rocks yeah Mm -hmm. uh but you can definitely get to different vantage points and use that enhanced dark vision to see much further uh Uh, than you usually would so again roll perception uh perception uh i rolled a 15 plus 5 is 20 dang the entire group's about 20 all right Mm -hmm. well played well played indeed uh i rolled some rolls as well uh, they were not nearly as good. Um, let's talk about the night, right? So it's been dark for a little bit now. It was dark when you crossed the channel. It was dark when you got your bodies back. If you had to guess, it's probably around like midnight, 1 a.m. at this point. I'm tired. It's been a long day dying and coming back and changing bodies and a lot of things that are not even just physically exhausting, but mentally exhausting have taken place, right? <clears throat> so as you settle in and kind of make the best of this shockingly nice alcove um, with your little owl security and Odette, you know, kind of doing a quick reconnaissance um, out there. You feel like you're all pretty safe. and have selected a pretty good spot. Right. Uh, so, Bella, I know you don't have to sleep. Are you the only one that stays awake? I thought I'm... I thought Odette and I both don't sleep. Calhoun. Odette, Odette yeah. no longer sleeps? Okay, cool. O- o- Odette, um, Odette just, like, sits by you and just kind of, like, nods and, like, opens up her book and starts reading. Okay. Cool. I had a little scene I wanted to do before we actually went to sleep, as soon as we were in a safe place and all comfortable and hunkered down. Go for it. You were there. I'm going to connect with Gruff and check in on all those c- civilians we saved. That is a good scene. Um, how far does your telepathy usually go? It's like a mile or something like that for it Gruff? It does not say. Same plane of existence. Dope. All right. Yeah, that's too easy. So first, I'm just going to connect with him and be like, I'm alive! Yeah, hey, walk me through this. As you sit down and you go to connect, uh, what does this look like? Uh, we're supposed to be able to see through each other's eyes and communicate. Uh, his intelligence is abnormally high, but I don't think he speaks English. Uh, his intelligence is six, I want to say. I don't remember. Um, That's incredibly high, yeah, for a goat. Yeah, <laughs> it's because he's a celestial uh, yeah. goat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm assuming I can get across emotions. Uh, vague ideas. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Like like a dog. Yeah, like a like a very intelligent tiny child, kind of right. Yeah, uh, a toddler. Well, yes. I mean, you see all those dogs who like can like communicate with like the buttons. Things. Press the buttons. Like, yeah, it's like mm-hmm. that level of like outside now. <laughs> Let me check some things. I Ten's think supposed to be an average person now. Right? <laughs> yeah. So if 10 is an average person, 6 yes. is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> He's smarter than most barbarians, yeah. 
if if, if, you know, <laughs> if you follow any of the average like IQ tables, and I know there's a lot of contention around like mm -hmm. intelligence, like a, a mapping or a measurement. I also your don't think it's a rational in the in oh, sorry. Like, oh, like, you're, like you're... 10 points off from, from mean on the IQ. I don't yeah, think it's I, like... I think, well, especially for D&D, &D, you can kind of take as is intelligence and just add a zero to it. And that's probably what the intelligence like IQ score is. So like a, a 10 is average. That's 100. You can get into college. 120, that's a law student, you know? That's 12. 6, 60... You can do stuff with that, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah can confirmed. His intelligence is six. Okay. So I looked at the uh, description because you're using find mount, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is what it is telepathic within a, within a mile, which says to me oh, that okay. uh, Gruff can talk back, right? Now, <clears throat> do you go to reach out? They are not within a mile, right? Okay. But you know that there are ways if you have a lot of extra time that you can really focus and get in uh, quick snippets of conversation, right? Okay. Um, so effectively, what I'm going to let you do is kind of over-channel the ability, okay. if you want, to reach out and communicate. Performing it as a ritual, kind of? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So usually you, you would just be able to like kind of sense rough and talk to him this is way more focused i think you're lighting some incense or like meditating or taking additional extra time to boost that range um something that would be much harder harder to do in like normal combat or scenarios but you have time now yeah okay so yeah in that case i just want to get through the feeling that uh we are alive the party is alive we are coming for them are they alive <laughs> Is, um, did Yusef make it? Did the uh, did the the congregation get through? As and the are, loved ones of the people here. As you were trying to like meditate and expand this ability, uh, <laughs> take a few breaths, and eventually you open your eyes and you realize you're not um, in this little cave anymore. You're in a different area. It's still kind of dark, uh, but you can see in the same shades of like black and white, just like you would with normal dark vision, right? Mm. Um, and as you're looking around, you're a little, a little higher than you normally would be. Uh, you're like, oh shit. Um, and in front of you, you can see, uh, Metzli and Yusef, right? Uh, Yusef seems to be holding a lantern or something, walking through a cave tunnel, right? Uh, and you kind of turn and look behind you, you can see, um, Cole and a few other people you see from the um, from the wedding ceremony that kind of kind of followed down this what you perceive to be a tunnel um, they are moving through, okay. and you hear Gruff just kind of like make a noise and try to get Metzli's attention. Oh yeah, they have a, dru a, a druid with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, just walk and, over to poker. <laughs> yeah, she, she like turns and kind of, hey, just kind of backs and tries to back her up up the tunnel again. It's like, hold on, hold on, and, and then like after like two more of these, just kind of goes, oh wait, shit, um, and then <laughs> casts uh, speak with animal and just says, okay, gruff, is everything okay? Say, hey, it's valid. <laughs> we're alive. Gruff starts relaying this message of like, hey, it's valid, and we're still alive. <laughs> and I'm just about, like, I don't know about still. <laughs> we're alive again. <laughs> we're alive again. <laughs> and like everyone in the tunnel just stops. Like you see the light swivel towards you. It's like Yusef is looking at you. Everyone's just like staring at Gruff. Um, they're like. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. Um, it, is everyone is everyone with you? Yes. So like, we're all here. Okay, where's here? We're right outside town. We're about to go in and try to help some civilians, but then we have a plan for taking down that bitch, whoever I can't remember her name. 
You hear Yusef in the background. Uh, Sari. Bye. No, no, not Sari. Whoever's controlling Sari. She's got a name. Oh, too. yes. Um, Zengi. Yeah. Not that he would know, but um, it's been brought up. Says, that okay. is in character. That's exactly how Valen would have said it. <laughs> uh, Metzli and Yusef kind of nod, and Yusef says, I took everyone to the tunnels. There's an evacuation route that heads north of the city. Uh, that's where we are. He's like, kind of talking, like, to the goat, and he's like awkwardly crouched down, and then like kind of just like, it's it's very weird for him to have this conversation. Um, he says, "So we're we're heading north, and we're going to try to catch um, a caravan or something down to Waterdeep." Okay, you all stay safe. That's number one. We wanted you all to be safe. I'm probably going to resummon Gruff here. If you don't need him. Okay. Um, and the party all just kind of look at each other. Just kind of talk real quick. And they murmur, and they're just like, yeah, uh, if you need to take Gruff back, that's that's fine. I think we've gotten... We had such a fantastic lead with you holding off whatever was back there that we managed to get some distance before things got bad. Um, awesome. There's Everyone couple... here is going to feel great that everybody is alive and okay. I, uh, there are a few people I know in Waterdeep, um, and he gives you a couple of addresses. He says, uh, I'm going to go to uh, my cousin's house, and I'll take everyone with me. They'll welcome us in, and you can meet us there. All right. If you get out in, the the, in the city? Is, is that safe? Uh, in, in Waterdeep. Oh, okay, so okay. Uh, yeah, they're heading they're heading south. If they can catch a caravan, so okay. that's the plan. But it's a place for them to meet up with you again. Okay, out of character. Uh, I did not expect to be able to talk to them. If I knew that I could have, I would have asked the party if they had any messages for their loved ones. Um, I think you can all hear Valen murmuring through this conversation. I think he told you all what he was about to do, and he starts like repeating the conversation. So I think you all get the gist. That he's made contact with the party. Uh, Odin does That's settle wild shape, next so to him we're just and does it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Odette does settle down next to uh, Valen and does whisper, um, uh, could you please ask if uh, Cole is okay and if he is safe? I can see him. He's right here. Cole is there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Confirm. He is walking along in this tunnel and seems okay. Yeah, you mm -hmm. kind of swivel back with Gruff's head. Cole's near the back, kind of hunched over in this like five foot tall tunnel, uh, kind of bringing up the rear of the party. Uh, tell, tell everybody there that be on the lookout for um, Lady Alora. I am going to try to summon her or at least alert her. We will see what happens, but she, if they meet up with her, she will be able to keep them safe. Otherwise... And she, she was supposed to be on the road south of town coming up, right? Jim? She said she was going to come to Neverwinter somehow, uh, and that Odette was in danger. I... So we don't know where from. Correct. No. Uh, unfortunately, okay. no. I do not... She is very mysterious. She has her ways. So. Okay, but Cole knows about her, right? Yes. Okay, so I, I would relay that they, uh, they might run into her on the way. Cole knows what she looks like. If you meet her on the road, huzzah! Uh, I'll, make, so I'll make sure that's uh, taken care of. And uh, he, like, looks at Gruff with Val, and you can have the camera kind of pointed at you as Cole, like, crouches down, like, pats Gruff's head, and is like, uh, I love you, Odette. Just be safe. <laughs> Sweet. I would relay the message. <laughs> um, o Odette uh, sighs in relief and like kisses her hand and plants it on on Valen's forehead. <laughs> Gruff licks his face. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, thanks. Thanks. Um, 
<sighs> Anybody else? Uh, uh, Itzel, you do know that I am talking through your friend, the druid. Do you have anything to say? Once again, Itzel's still wild shaped, so she's like, like we're just. Just vibing. Squaw, squaw, squeak, squeak, yeah, like upon squeak, squeak. your, uh, yeah, exactly. Like as it becomes clear that you're talking, like sort of to them through that, like the like, yay, everyone survived. Just sort of translates to more bouncing. So it's good. Oh, Be- Bella's still in. Speak to animals to, for our guard. She can. She. We're gonna have a three-way translation here. There's a, there's a lot of weird stuff going on now. Like, what are you about? Yeah, Bella's talking. The owls are like, who are you talking to? It's like, not me, not you. Go away. Like, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you managed to get that information from Yusef. You confirm the party is safe. Uh, you can confirm that they are, they are heading north out of the city. They're going to catch a caravan. There's like a main travel road that takes them to uh, Waterdeep, and they're going to try to stay with some family there and, as, and figure out what to do next. So what else do you have for the group? I think that's everybody. Uh, is Father Stone with them? Father Stone is not. Okay. He's probably at the, the, ch- the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, you confirm Cole, um, Metzli, and Yusef are all there, as well as some of the um, other guests. Oh. You don't see you don't see Mortimer, you don't see Father Stone. Wherever they went, this else they're not here. So initially the plan for like the Yusef was to go back to the Nasiri household and, right? Like that they were going to convey in there. So do, does it look like he has like a canteen on him? Because we got like... Did Burble like, make it? That's what I'm saying. Uh, there's not seen to be a canteen on Yusef's pouch or anything. This is now a rescue mission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, for, right. for whoever let, managed to get within fountain range also. Not Burble. Burble's fine. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah everyone uh, else is in danger. Burble's just chilling. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll let them know that they're they're on the way to somewhere. I'm going to leave Gruff with them and I'll summon him in the morning. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and then you kind of exhale. That connection is lost. Right. But immediately cool. pass out and fall asleep. Yeah. As <laughs> you're very tired. So Valen just goes down to sleep, right? Some time passes. Um, make some, check that off my list. Bella, as you're sitting there, right? Odette, um, I think the two of you two make some mall talk. And then at a certain point, Odette gets up and like goes back outside and is, does some like, leaping across the cliff faces and is doing a little more uh, of that reconnaissance. Right. And it's in one of those moments where Odette is out that uh, Grace speaks up, just says, so um, now that we have a moment, let's talk about earlier. Uh, what about earlier? Uh, I guess, um, if you don't, you, you can go first. What, what happened? Where did you go? <laughs> because. We, we, uh, some sort of limbo. We were dead. Mm-hmm. That's but bad. like not in the afterlife. And we got spoken to by some guardians who gave us information about how we could get stronger to successfully fight that demon. What kind of guardian things? Uh, you know, it kind of was all a blur. Um, I can probably touch base with everybody else when they're not sleeping and like find out for sure what that was all about. Okay. Um, I only ask is things that things that reside in those limbo spaces can be weird and can have agendas. So um, 
it's always best to know what we're dealing with. Um, from my perspective, we were at a wedding and then you were effectively gone um, until you came back in your strange clay form and then jumped back into your body. So there was a bit of time where I could sense you out there somewhere, but uh, there was no good connection. Strange. Um, I do have something that is worth bringing up, though. Okay. Said I had something uh, important, right? At the the wedding. Yes. Uh, I told you, hey, uh, to run. Uh, it's because I recognize the energy. Um, I have. Very long time ago, Zengi and I were research partners. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Mm -hmm. So. So. He... Did you not recognize any of the things we were finding related to Zengi? It's been thousands of years. <laughs> Easily 1500. Now, well, not till his energy signature returned. He, he went off the deep end, right? Um, started making all sorts of crazy deals and pushing the limits to try to find an answer to the immortality question. And uh, at a certain point, it was too much even for me, and he was not okay with that. So he turned on me. And uh, the rest is a little scattered. But, yeah. So, did Zengi turn you into whatever it is you are now? I don't quite know. I know that... Um, his existence is something that is probably hindering our research and our continued success, but to put it mildly, yeah, I don't know. There are answers I don't have. There are pieces of me that are not quite there, but <clears throat> He was my old research partner, and he did try to kill me. Well, on the plus side, that means you should have some insight we might be able to use into Zengi and his methods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it, it, if anything comes to you that you think could be helpful, just tell me. I've been trying to piece some things together, but... Hopefully before it's time to run next time? <laughs> you don't expect uh, something like that to happen every day. It's hard to prepare for that. But, yeah. But, glad you're safe, though. Um well, relis, you know, safer than when I was dead, I guess. Yeah, that would also put a hinder in our in a, a huge 
hindrance in our goals. You being dead. The, the goal to not die. Yes. I feel like that would have put a big hindrance in those plans. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. And he just kind of gets quiet. You uh, still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Just thinking back. I guess uh, if, let me know if something occurs to you. And otherwise, I'm going to maybe um, strike up some conversation with these owls, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Good talk. Yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of lets the topic drop after that. Um, <laughs> very weird. So, yeah. Um, That's not disconcerting at all. Right? <laughs> Warlocks, man, they're fucking weird. <laughs> Odette, uh, you're on about. Right. Yes. right. We Doing your, your recon. Um, and it starts to get a little lighter, right? You anticipate you probably have, or estimate you probably have about 45 minutes until sunrise. You can see like the little touch of gold on the horizon um, as the night's been passing with, without real incident. And let's do like one last lap to make sure everything is okay. And um, you've seen the tower, right? The, the castle never. <sighs> Even when you all were looking for this cave and leaving that last fight, it started to kind of glow and fill up almost with like that strange magical energy that was described as some type of like big magic or like large ritual thing. And you all stopped and kind of stared at it and just went, we like, we have no idea what this is and just don't have the capacity to deal with it. Right. Uh, well, throughout the evening, it's been continuously um growing in its power and eventually reaches the top of castle never and see a strange glint of energy, almost like a lens flare. Um, and these strange silk lines start to just fly off the top of this, um, of the top of the castle. And they start to kind of weave together through the air they make a strange looking net that just falls over the city in a dome like fashion. And the dome collapses on itself like a little parachute and just covers everything uh, in this strange sparkling silver wispy strands. How unusual. Um, she didn't didn't pay attention a lot in like an you know, magic class or whatever but she she's tries to figure out what kind of like is is that obturation magic is this um divination no that would make no sense um so she's just trying to see if she can identify she however she also understands this is big magic maybe even high elven magic and she's never witnessed that before so uh, roll Arcana. Oh, no. Um, that is a, a surprisingly a three. So, <laughs> a three. Um, uh, I think you're transfixed by the beauty of this as you watch it mm. and trying to, like you said, cycle through. You, you, you understand the basic tenets of magic. You understand the schools that are out there. And, like, mm. you just don't no, like based on what you're looking at, you've never seen this sort of described, or uh, you've never, I've never seen somebody cast anything like this. Um, but it's beautiful. Ah, magnetic. Um, she continues to kind of like cast about and uh, uh, see if she can see anything like trying to make their its way toward us or anything. She's just looking for danger. 
And uh, if she doesn't see anything, then she'll return and just kind of like meditate or start stretching for the beginning of the day. Okay. Uh, Yeah, it seems like you are well hidden enough and you've done enough work with the owls and um, the preparation to find where you were staying that (sighs) you seem safe, right? I need you to do me a favor, though. Yes. And make a wisdom saving throw, please. Of course. Have you too. Uh, that's an eleven. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, you work your way back towards the cave, um, and things get a little weird, right? It's sun up, and everything. This warm wave of light kind of washes over you. Mm-hmm. Um. And as it makes contact, the events of the last day seem to just fade away, Hmm. right? The terrible wedding attack, the assault of all these demons in the city, the undead just piling up corpses, right? The fires, the screaming, all that just seems to fade away and memories of running your dance studio and putting on plays and having a, uh, you know, wonderful date outing with Cole and all these other things kind of push the surface of your memories uh, as you kind of walk into this gross cave, right? Um, you still recognize all your companions, right? All that stuff is still there, but the strange memories of the, the memories of the last day of violence and terror in the city are just gone. So I can remember everything before that, like preparing for the wedding the day before, adventuring. Yeah, the wedding was great. You remember the the cool bonding you all had at the Ninja Warrior tests. You remember the sweet adventure you went on. You remember the the you know drinking party the day before the wedding, the nightclubs you went to, getting custom clothing, adventure. Like you remember all that stuff, but yeah. the actual yeah. fall of Neverwinter just is erased from your mind. Okay, uh, um, and the conver- the conversation uh, in the plane of death. With the two entities. Great. Uh, Odette, um, kind of like, you know, uh, you do not hear her enter. She just, like, is there suddenly. And uh, she says, This is all well and good. But we should really return to uh, Neverwinter. I have a theater to run. Uh, It has been quite nice doing all of this, but I think I'm ready to go back. This is kind of dirty. <laughs> Who's with me? And then she just like, she's like, <laughs> she <laughs> starts marching out of the cave. Is this morning? Yeah. yeah the, the, you can see the sun has risen outside at this point. It's been, uh, you got, you have a long, long rest. So you've all effectively leveled up, right? Um, and yeah, Odette just kind of walks in and says this to all of you and then walks out like the last events have just not occurred. It's cool. so like curled up in wild shape and then like sort of slept like that and like, you know, as she reverts back to her actual self, like still been or just like curled up in the ball on the ground, like sleeping, like maybe like near like Valen's feet or something as a fossa. So now I'm like, just like, you know, <laughs> a little bit like next to be like, wait. Oh, tell me oh, my internet connection no, isn't gone. coming to your theater right now. Yeah, you're still out. You're still alive. My computer's frozen. Oh, that's weird. You are not, if that makes any difference. <laughs> that's, that's very bizarre. There it goes. Okay. Yeah, we did it. Yay. Sorry, Sorry. what were you saying, uh, Itzel? What's uh, up? So, uh, Odette, who's, who's coming to your show right now? Uh, Odette, like, 
<laughs> you don't hear anything, and then she's just like steps, slinks out of the shadow, and she's like, yeah, "Cole, I assume your Sith will probably be there. Um, I would hope all of you. Um, I know Lady Alora is still coming, but there's some kind of she is so dramatic, it must run in the family. She said uh, there was something about uh, some doom and gloom. But you know, no. You, you all probably know, you know, great ancestors. Um, but uh, they talk of the town. I, I don't want Cole to run it on his own. He's a good man. I, I mean, he's north of the city now, isn't he? I thought he was with uh, Gruff. Who's at the theater then? I would imagine no one. Uh, or what some with the attack? Know, with the animated armor suits, maybe. Um, um, can uh, we just walk out of the cave and point at the city with all the smoke and the fire above it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, you you walk, you know, walk out of the cave having this odd conversation, get like an arm around Odette, like. Uh, this is just like go over here and look at this thing. And Valen, with all the confidence in the world, you just point at this at the city and be like, because of the attack, right? Uh, and then your jaw drops because you realize you're looking at a beautiful, pristine morning with birds chirping and sun shining and like all the weird black plumes of smoke and the damage that you saw the necrotic whirlwinds that appear, they're all gone. And Neverwinter looks beautiful and unharmed. Uh, I am looking at perhaps the best city in the world. All right, there's something wrong here. (laughs) Uh, Odette, do me a favor and make another wisdom saving throw, please. And Valen, what's your... uh, your aura bonus is a plus three. It is plus three. Yeah. Um, All right. And a little bit better, friends. All right. So, and I do it? not have any of my detect spells memorized. Uh, that is 24. Okay. Oh, new follower. Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, hey, what's up? Monkey Hi. Lord NC. Heck yeah. Good name. Oh, we got a donation. Oh, didn't we? <laughs> What? Yeah, the donation alert does not appear to be working again. Oh, no! Okay, well, let me take the number up for advantage. Boop. Yay, and uh, thank, thank you for the donation. So, sorry we missed that. Good catch. So We're at 1723. We were at 16... What? I think it's like 50 bucks? Uh, yeah, 1660, 78. Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, thank you for the donation. So, um, good, good spot. So, like... It's all we'll kind of like sidle closer to like Bella and be like, S- do we think the spell map? Like, is that- it has to be a spell. Uh, Odette, as you roll at 23 on your wisdom saving throw, mm-hmm. um, the two memories in your brain start to collide and fight, right? The first one of the last day of like peace and harmony. And then all the actual stuff that happened starts to rush back in as you feel that weird, but well not weird. So as you feel that calming divine light come off of Valen, right. Uh, mm-hmm. It starts to just push back on whatever is affecting your, your mind um, as these just terrible memories start flooding in and <sighs> eventually equalize right to the point where you can now remember what happened, but the city still looks pristine. Oh no! Uh, uh, and she just kind of like, you know, like falls to her knees for a second and holds her head. Oh no! What happened? Where w- did everybody get up? Of course they did. Oh, my head! Itzel, the thing you did with the book before that made yeah, everything better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I don't have to touch you or anything or it's just like we're gonna do that same like pulling like out motion and cast some dispel magic here um yeah uh, uh, Odette allows you to like um cool I don't I mean I don't have to touch you or anything it just needs to oh be, great <laughs> I was gonna say I don't even think you necessarily need to be willing either um the, nope. uh, 
You can nope. make caster level checks against the spell magic. Yeah. Nope. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Okay. If someone's like, F that, and you're like, no, I really don't want you to. Mm-hmm. All right. Delightful. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Let's yeah, go ahead and make a, go ahead and make a uh, caster level check. Yeah. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. That's the thing that I want. It looks like a tray. Oh, yeah, we good. Okay. Uh, 16, and it's a DC of 13 if I'm on third level. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the rest of whatever is plaguing you, Odette, fades mm-hmm. away. Oh. Uh, as Edsel casts to spell magic, and you can kind of have peace in your thoughts again. Right. Oh. Does um, she get to know what she dispelled? Uh, you can make a Arcana check if you'd like. I can do that part though. Yay. Um, no. I mean, unless at least probably not. Uh, does six make it some type of spell? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's magical. Um, <laughs> that would that would be a natural one. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Oh no! Whatever, whatever that smoky thing is. Yeah. No, you. Uh, if anybody, if anybody wants to use the help action, you're welcome to. Um, how do we do that? Just roll Arcana ourselves. Uh, you, you basically said like to help, and then describe how you're helping, and then uh, itself can roll an advantage. <clears throat> it's actually very useful. So if you're like, can I just give her a good smack? <laughs> 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 All right, cool. A gentle oh, smack. <laughs> this, this feels on brand for the. Yeah, team. that's that's it pretty really accurate. Good. So, get, yeah, go ahead and roll again. Much better. That's a fifteen total. <laughs> okay. Um, the yeah, thump yeah, of no, restoration. You're right, you're right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is. This is something uh, new yeah, that you would. <laughs> Just the gauntlet fist, like right, I used to love it. <laughs> um, this is something new, right? You kind of look at this magic, and you look at what's effect- how it's affecting Odette, um, and you realize it's a strange hybrid enchantment uh, combined of both, well, in- enchantment and illusionary magic, right? Um, okay. Uh, clearly, well, the enchantment part is having some sort of effect on the target's memory. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, she's got, like, obviously, you're, there's some illusion because she's not seeing the city, or now you are, but you weren't seeing the city as it actually is. And there's. Oh, case in point. Just so you, all of you are seeing the same beautiful, pristine. Oh, okay. Neverwinter, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, no, no, okay. no, no. Like That's you, when you go up, yeah, you point at the city. Like the city looks fine to all of you. Yeah. Uh, even after that, you dispel just know magic that was it's cast. Not supposed to be that way, and she didn't. Okay. Correct. Right, Odette well, was convinced that none of it had that happened. That's illusion. So, uh, yes, that's okay. where the illusion seems to be coming from. Of like, yeah. Ah. There, there's an enchantment portion of it that's scrambling. The, the insides. Um, I don't know if I can any more than that. Like, 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 kind of like, 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 make it look like she's almost like tasting the air, like a, like a cat weasel would. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't know if I can tell much else. Um, party mascot currently. Burble is uh, Burble's MIA. Party mascot's cat weasel. Cat weasel. Love it. Locked yeah. in. We might. I think we might have a preference for weasel-like animals at this point. Between it's a lotter and yeah. <laughs> uh, Odette uh, kind of like gets up and um, she she looks at you all and she says, "There was a strange thing that happened when I looked out uh, just as dawn was breaking. I remember that." There was a beautiful design, um, and she like she opens up her book and just kind of like gets out of like. She realizes she doesn't have a pen on hand, so she just like goes like that, and like a bit of a puff of smoke brings up a pen, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like drawing what it is, and uh, um, like 
basically tries to create like an almost 3D image of the spell effect that she saw falling off and around the uh, the city. Um, and she like kind of like like kind of go d- gives it a little flick and it becomes whatever color it was and starts just kind of going through a little gif animation. <laughs> um, and and she like yes. holds uh, I have it somewhere. I have my book around here somewhere. Uh, she like holds up the book open and like you know like shows all of you and she says, this is exactly what I saw. Um, it had a lens flare of some sort and then it just fell over the city um, a little bit like um, like a net and then everything was so peaceful hmm. and she puts her hand on Val and she says being in contact with you and perhaps the sacredness of your, your aura seemed to help but it's a, it is gone. Thank you for your magic. As you open the book. I don't know what this is, though. Eddie is chomping at the bit for you showing us this picture. <laughs> as you open the book, um, nothing happens. Do we see what she drew? Yeah. You see okay. the picture. You know, everything is fine. The book has no strange reactions to you opening it and using it. it. If you walk back out now, do you go nuts again? Would you like to go on a walk with me, Valen? Sure. Let's let's take another gander at this city. <laughs> um, and, yeah. She leads away. Okay. Yeah. And you don't see you don't feel that effect again, right? You head up, you look at the city. Um, it's clearly not right, but you don't feel that memory erasure or like strange enchantment trying to mess with your thoughts again. Does Valen? No. Okay. <clears throat> so it's well, just witnessing the casting. It's possible that Odette said something like, hey, you were in a protective aura, right? That could have helped you. Um, Odette was separated from you when that happened, so. So I'm just thinking about the people in town who are cowering in burning buildings from monsters everywhere. Do they see everything is fine now? That's a wonderful question. Probably Maybe we should go to a nearby building? small village. <laughs> a small building. Farms. Okay. Salt of the earth. <laughs> Salt of the earth. Cool. All right. Well, are we are, are we ready to roll out? I think you all are. As, as oh, I, I summon Gruff. I'm that back. Takes, <laughs> <laughs> that takes ten minutes. I got to sit down and think real hard. So yeah. Uh, but poof, bam! There's just like <laughs> I love the idea that like you summon Gruff in this cave and it's just like everyone's in there with gruff it's like oh just trying to like get out now like okay let's just uh <laughs> but yeah you, you get gruff out there as well uh gruff is actually great for the terrain so <laughs> we're we're holding each other's hands and dancing in a circle <laughs> <laughs> um it is so lovely isn't it <laughs> such grace <laughs> such fairness <laughs> all right Seven gruff, the five of you get ready and uh, you start heading into the outskirts of town. Let me, uh, she does actually have the feet sure footed, so (laughs) heading good. (laughs) It's okay, I don't need those dice. And it's a good time to take five anyway, so. Uh. <laughs> no, I really don't need those dice. Those are my uh, fudge dice. They are not useful for this evening. Gotcha. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take a quick five, five anyway. I got to check on something. But um, we'll come back. We'll start heading into Neverwinter and see what's up with uh, this weirdness. So we'll be right back. See you in five. Back to live, I guess. Yeah. And uh, we'll hang out with our lovely, lovely chat as we're. Yeah. Just vibing. I mean, Rouge has been replaced by a giant penguin. It's fine. 
I love how the pig was just like glaring ominously over the chair. <laughs> I didn't want to mix a drink on camera. There's probably something about brand names and advertising and stuff. I mean, I mean, I tried. Kit Kat does, Kat not, does sponsor not sponsor us, us with, with uh, <laughs> Call of Cthulhu, and but no, nope. it's very rude because like the, the official snack of Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah. Well, because Kit Kat, so you're breaking off those pieces and like. Cthulhu, you're just breaking people's sanity. So I feel yeah. like there's like some same thing. Some good synergy, right? This is yeah. real breakers. Come on. Oh that. shit! Like, Ooh. yeah, we'll get that sponsorship one day, um, and then we'll one day. Yeah, we'll get oodles of money, and we'll use it to just donate to the surf rider slash. Uh, that does sound like us, head, right? <clears throat> we occasionally put a little bit of money into production value. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just just a smidge just enough to keep the lights on you know <laughs> um which is fine like the whole that's not the point you know if i wanted to make money uh, for a hobby it would probably not be the one that would involve me buying a bunch of technology shit uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah well, welcome back to it let's get let's get into it right we have, so so I'm going back to town and we want to stop at one of these farms on the way yeah, I actually meant to bring up. up, up uh, it'll never winter map, right? Mm. So, so you came off of uh, you know Moonstone Mask Island, right? And by the cliffs by Neverwinter, um, you could ignore the beach Leviathan thing. Thing that's not relevant to this map. Um, but you can see the cliff you managed to kind of scale up and over a little uh, retaining wall into the Blue Lake District, right? Named for its, well, beautiful scenic Blue Lake. It's where all like the suburban houses are, right? Little bike paths and everyone's like um, very, very comfortable in this little community area. Uh, there's a little more space in here too, right? As opposed to like, the Protector's Enclave and the Tower District, there's a lot of business happening there. Um, a lot of commercial, just traffic, a lot of people coming in and out, right? The Blue Light District's a little more quiet and chill. Um, this is more where they have like festivals and other stuff. But right now, as you're kind of, as you come over this, um, over this cliff and look into the area, right? You see nothing but just well manicured lawns and nice houses and uh, people going through their morning routines, right? Just out and about. No signs of an attack or damage or chaos. <laughs> this is Valen just suspiciously sipping his morning scotch. <laughs> what the hell is this? Uh, I'm going to use my divine sense within 60 feet. Do I sense anything? Uh, picks up what fiend undead celestial. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you use this, and I will also remind all of you: you have the ability to use uh, that cool thing that the um, donation got us. No, the cool thing that the that dusty and sunshine gave you. The what? You all can use eyes of the grave. Oh, as an ability. Oh yeah, when they brought us back to life. What the mm -hmm. uh, damn it? Uh, that character sheet is at home where I don't have internet. Uh, okay. So pretend for everybody else's benefit. Right? Remind them what it does. So for <laughs> for Valen, you just get an extra use of divine sense because it's actually a little okay. better. Eyes, Eyes of the Grave just because is, is, is divine sense for undead. Um, it lets you just kind of look around and detect undead things within I think sixty feet, right? Um, but Valen, as you as you channel this ability and you look around um you notice two things one um this ability just cuts through whatever weird illusion is happening here and you can actually see like damage caused by the attacks in this area right and it's Weird, because like at the edge of your vision is this like little happy suburban utopia, and then in the center is just like cratered houses and like uh, some corpses on the ground and like smoking rubble, and you're just like, oh, as you like kind of rotate around and look at things as they really are. Ah. <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> um, okay. but you see that, 
And the energy that comes off is fiendish around this this spell itself, whatever okay. is causing this illusion. Um, also, pick up little hints of undead energy moving throughout the city, right? Okay. Uh, within 60 feet, there's like uh, something in like a nearby house kind of scrambling around. It uh, looks like it's trapped inside. All right. But, I will point that out. We go. We go to go to that house. <laughs> let's uh, not to let's, uh, let's knock on the door over here. Like rewind too much, but since we completed a long rest and before we really get going in the morning, so as we see, see this, uh, it's all wants to do some like, uh, like casting of the bones kind of a thing. But I have a thing for cosmic omen. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm just to have that ready to go um i'll roll the thing whether or not we end up with a even or odd but I'll take you back to the main screen great um yeah go ahead and roll uh great so i got an even which means that uh when someone is about to make an attack or saving throw or an ability check i can roll a d6 as a reaction and add it to their total oh very cool for for the day yeah all right dope so well, um, right until we get another rest so you know, Do you get to decide that after they roll? As a reaction. So mm-hmm. when you're about to make the roll. Okay. Like, ah, like I see, like, Valen's about to hit that hellhound. Like, crap, this is probably the one. We have. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Before we do more of the, like, you know, having to dispel people's illusion stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You work your way up to this house right. working your way through the uh you know the sunny bike paths and shimmering nice days out as you all like activate these eyes of the grave abilities if you want to like you can see the same shit that valen has seen the difference is you don't sense the fiendish energy around the illusion right uh but you can see like the actual state of things in this area um i will point out the house that has seemed to have an undead walking around in it Mm-hmm. There's like a little farmhouse cottage with like the roof has been scorched a bit, but it seems for the most part to be still structurally sound, right? Uh, you see a broken window on the second floor and you can hear the occasional just like thump and growling of something moving around inside. Uh, hmm. uh, how often can we activate this ability? Uh, a number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. So three. Um, the time. So do I get three more charges of mine or just one more? I think you just get one more because you already have the ability and just add one more on. That's that seems, fine. Yeah. It gives you like what, four or five uses of it? Uh, it's one plus my charisma mod, which was four and one more would make it five. Yeah. Yeah, five. <laughs> oh, and I just used one. So let me mark that off. So. Um. Uh, o- Odette says actually a-, a question for the gym if this is like the lake district right and it's kind of mm-hmm. like kind of nice kind of well to do um, uh, would Odette know anybody here being at, uh, you, uh, activating my um, ability of like knowing people around town uh, uh, as an entertainer me. like a known quantity it's, it's basically a thing yeah, I think there are definitely people's houses that you've either been to or know of uh, yeah. that are patrons of the arts around here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not this farmhouse specifically, but you, you recognize the neighborhood. You've probably been up here a couple of times for drinks and dinner parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, a, a number of uh, lovely mansions here that uh, I have had the occasion to perform at. Um, not necessarily. You know, it's just... Um, it was a dinner party. Things were getting out of hand, and memories from another time. She she kind of like reads the room, which is as uh, some of them may still be around or have survived. They may be able to give us supplies if we are down on anything. Mm. I need to get a book. It is, it is entirely impossible, but uh, uh, if, if, if you do not want to, that is fine. But uh, 
Okay. And if if you if you wish to, I I'm just saying that I I, I have connections here. If um, you are willing to make them. Yeah. What do you all do? Oh, sorry. What do you What do you all want to do? Uh, I want to go check out that house. Okay. Do Do we want to open the house? Like a yeah, like... so, Um. Yes. Whatever's inside, yeah, I want to say, kill it. Yeah. And I yeah, want to see right, what it yeah. is as Got I kill it. it. <laughs> I actually feel like it still probably would be like right valid. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's right. contained within the house, but of course you want to kill it. Okay. Yes. Um. Yeah, as, as you approach the house, like I said, this one of the smaller cottages around the area, you get a little bit of space, you know, uh, between these houses on the outskirts and the ones that are more in the more uh, densely populated suburban area. Uh, like I said, you see there's a broken window on the second floor. It looks like uh, the doors like locked shut uh, or at least, you know, closed and secured. Um, and you can see through the window on the first floor, like something just bumping around inside in a little silhouette of movement. Um, what do you want to do? I want to make sure everybody else is around me and ready and then boot that damn door open. Okay. <laughs> Fun. Um, let's do it. Everyone roll <laughs> Dad looks at Bella and she's like, <laughs> do we need to do this? Because it, it seems I understand that the undead need to rest, but... Don't you want to know what we're facing in town? No. I do. <laughs> I want to put my stuff. That's I want very interesting. And I want to leave so we can or find Lady Alora. I can respect that. <laughs> I'm on the side of just leaving. I don't know why we came into town in the first place. I was place. totally happy with the idea of leaving it alone, but it oh, was clear that Valen is not going to leave this alone. She's like, okay, I got you. And I'm like standing behind you with the staff ready. Like, Thank you. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, I think we talked about before just to make sure that, that <laughs> we're clear on my motivations we... here. Yes, like, the worry was that all of the people feels a little in, bit like when we were in training, guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. The worry was that all the people that were in danger would have gone to the church. And so I wanted to go there for a minute, make sure that everything is okie dokie, and then stop at people's spots to pick up their gear and then GTFO. That is the plan, correct? Yes. Yes. And, and I want to be ready for anything that attempts to stop plan A. Huh, that's fun. Um, do we want a stealthy approach or do we wish to? <laughs> she looks at your boots. Too late for that. Door <laughs> and like... Did you communicate that it was undead in there, Valen? Yes, yes. I pointed and I'm it like, out. I don't, I don't know if stealthy is going to matter if it's. You all can uh, identify it too with the eyes of the grave. Like you can see that undead energy. Yeah, they're not the brightest creatures anyway. Odette just immediately thinks back to the undead creature that was once Suri. She's like, we do not know that. Not it's Suri. Suri is in the kitchen looking for a cup. <laughs> um, it, it, meaning my my undying ancestor, Lady Alara, is very intelligent. We do not know if this is super intelligent. Then again, if it can't use a doorknob, <laughs> she kind of like scratches her head. And kind of like, That's fun. Okay. You uh, tell us what we need to do. Yeah, go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> so I got a 23. Good lord. And Gruff got a 7. <laughs> You Gruff is just, so like, so down. happy you're back. He's just, like, following you around like a little puppy and just, like, not paying attention to What are we doing, guys? Yeah, hey, Gruff's just fine. All right, anybody beat a 23? Oh, eight. Gruff got an eight. Oof. All right, eight. Um, for itself, I did really well. I got a 17. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. You're not going last. Double digits. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud. All right, Odette? 12. 12. Whoa, what happened there? Now a little low, Bella. right? Uh, 20. To a damn! She's feeling a little reluctant. Okay. 
Let's see. Why don't you just put the numbers on our little character windows? I have your AC up there. It's easier. Oh, okay. Because yeah. otherwise I'll be like, what's your AC every round? So this is much faster. Plus, if I put your numbers up there, I don't, I don't put the uh, bad guys up there. Uh, hmm. It's a, what's uh, your dex? Whom? It's L. What's your dex? Hi. Hi. Uh, plus two. Okay, it goes first. Um, my AC is a nineteen, by the way. What? Okay, I'll change that. Did you got that ring? Me? Yeah. yeah. I just got. As we leveled up, my strength of of a uh, charisma, poise, and all that stuff went up. So nice. Being being a dancer that makes me harder to hit because strength grates to poise and also haughty looks. So haughty looks prevent prevent this from happening. Oh, actually, that's fair. My AC is now fourteen, not thirteen. Look at me. Oh, moving on up. All right. Did you get the ring? Somebody got a ring of defense. No, well, I have bracers of defense. You got the bracers. I have the cloak. Bella has the ring. I mean, that's a very good question. Somebody should have that ring. Unless someone sold it. Guys, you can forget the ring. No, no. Bracers of defense are plus two. It's a 15 AC. What? That's the real number. Uh, I'm going to let Itzel charge in there. She got this. Yeah, I've been accidental tank enough times. It's uh, so I've got my staff and the bracers. Itzel has the highest two. kill count at Here's this point. Here's a 15, you said? 15. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You can make and Odette's 19? 19. Good, good. All right. I'm trying to creep up on Dallin. Heck yeah. I, I won't get there probably. Depending on context, that's I mean, a weird statement. Um. <laughs> I'm wearing full ass plate mail and a cloak of protection. If you beat me, that's going to be impressive as fuck. <laughs> you need to cover the full ass, yeah. That's important. Mm-hmm. That's what the cape's for. Double protection. All right, 19. There we go. We did it. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. Wrong on my screen. Did you what? It's still wrong on my screen. Still says fourteen. Oh yeah, so come on. Uh, that says fifteen. It's just a weird n- m- number. Oh. <laughs> it's just sign- sideways. Yeah, no, it's oh crazy. Gosh. But that is yeah. The, the like mine is fourteen, so you can see the four definitely. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that's weird. It's, just, it's the crazy font. Um, cool, Valen. You kick in the door to this little cottage, right? It explodes inward. Um, inside, you are met with uh, t- what looked like. Two large, uh, humanoid-sized, um, shambling corpses, right? Uh, that just both turn and look at you. Uh, they look like they've rotted a little bit. They've got kind of like a grayish tint to their skin. Uh, one of the jaws is like kind of hanging down. The other one has just like a crazy long tongue uh, that's like just slurping its way down its chest. It's uh, it's it's gross and spooky. Uh, but yeah, you kick in the door and uh, you're up first. Just curious, we, we know how long we've been dead. Does this, uh, as a priest, I've seen some dead bodies. Uh, does this look like they died in the attack, or was this BYO undead that she brought to town? Uh, these look like uh, corpses have accelerated decomposition. Okay. B-U. B-Y-O-O? B-U? Yeah. Okay. B-Y-O-O. B-U. Uh, it's not the first time you've noticed this, actually. You saw body. this on the, on the bodies uh, at the uh, bottom the of the cliff. Yeah. Some sort of weird accelerated decomposition. All right. Well, I'm going to charge in there and whack it. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's like a basically like a small like living room area. So there's like a, you know, a couch, a bookshelf, a writing desk, uh, uh, a couple other like odds and ends that you, there's just been like knocked over already by these things bumbling around. And you just like make a beeline, hop over the couch and just attack one of them. Um, just swords on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, you got the one with the, like the weird jaw and the one with the, the crazy tongue. All right. I'm trying to, uh, I absolutely want to kill these as a paladin in general. I'm also trying to watch for how they react. Like, I want to know how much trouble, you know, on a scale of 15 to 19, what's this thing's AC? But, uh, <laughs> okay. Swing away. I, I run in 
And I roll a, oh, it was almost a 17. Uh, that is a 10 plus my 7, 17. 17, that will hit. Uh, do you want to hit them all with the, with the unhinged jaw or the crazy long tongue? No, the tongue is creepy. Okay, tongue dude. It's Got 1d8 it. plus 2d6. I'm not doing anything crazy here. Uh, that is four physical damage. Okay. And seven fire damage. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, you hit it. Let's see. Of course, on 2d6, I got a 6 and a 1. That's how I roll. Uh, yeah, you hit it. The physical damage seems to really work well. Uh, the fire is muted around this thing. Like, it does burn. You can hear, like, flesh popping and sizzling, but, like, not the same reaction you've seen from other undead things. Zombies uh, are resistant to fire. Ooh, that's important to know. Yeah. Um, Smacks cool. it immediately, starts writing notes. <laughs> like, ah, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I do get uh, a second attack. You do have a second attack, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that is a nat 20, finally! Okay. My first that'll, crit. That'll do it. Uh, that is going to be nine magical physical damage. Just a, a reminder, uh, you can determine... When you'd like to smite to include after you've successfully hit. So if oh, you would like yes, to it's... crit this smite, you're welcome to. Uh, that is 12 fire damage and okay. not... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. You reminded me. I'm supposed to add my strength to my damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Please do that. Uh, so that is 13 magic physical damage and 12 fire damage. Okay. Nice. Uh, da, da, da. And I am not wasting a smite on this yet. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you smack it twice. Um, again, the bludgeoning damage, or the slashing damage, rather, uh, really seems to be working for it. But the um, the fire, eh, it's, it's doing enough. Right? Uh, and this thing just, like screeches at you in response. Um, okay. I will call out to the rest of the group that fire ain't doing shit. Hmm. Okay. okay. Bella, you're up. Uh, Valon just went inside. You just saw explosions of light and fire and you just hear it like <laughs> from these monsters inside. Bella like pauses and just does a deep sigh and then steps in hand already up like prepping uh eldritch blast okay and whatever yeah. she sees it there uh like i said there's one with like the crazy long tongue that's like partially on fire right now there's one with like the unhinged jaw uh she's kind of hanging down uh doesn't seem uh, to hurt. i've been fighting with fallon at this point long enough to know that if i try to help him he will just shout at me <laughs> i got this so i'll go for the one that's unhurt <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, it's it's far enough back that, you know, stumble around behind the couch, you can cast Elvish Blast. I would like to point out that I've only done that when other people were in danger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Qualify it now. Sure. Uh, so that is only an 11 for hit on the first one. Raise your hand, just explode some like heirloom on a bookshelf behind this thing. <laughs> it just turns, like the little shrapnel catches into its sides, and it's just like, ah! And just comes out. Uh, yeah. And then I fire off my second one in uh, rapid succession. And let's hope Owlbear doesn't. Oop, we just turn. Remember to oh. click the, bot the bottom icon on the tray so we can all see it. Yeah. See your oh, I thought I did, because like now it has a globe. Before it had a globe with a slash in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there it is. I do see it. I do see it. Yeah, you don't see it in the tray. I 18, 18 plus will hit. Yeah, it'll. Yeah, because that ends up being a twenty-seven. Yeah, that definitely hit. Just barely. Just uh, just grazes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the face, in the tongue, hopefully, because that's creepy. No. So let me do. 
<laughs> Wait, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit it twice. Hmm? So, I hit, I rolled two d10s, but the first one was the nine, oh. so. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so that will be, uh, 13 damage. Okay, 13, that's force, I believe, for Eldritch Blast. Yes, it is, um, force damage. Which is... Cool. Uh, yeah, the second blast connects and it staggers back. Um, its feet almost go out from under it and it catches itself uh, on like the side of the wall, right? Um, the one with the crazy uh, tongue. Yeah, the one with the crazy tongue lunges forward um, towards. That's what she hit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hit. Up. I hit the jaw. I thought. You I guess I tongue. did attack the one with the tongue. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So you attack cr- tongue guy, I attack jaw guy. Yes. It lunges towards uh, you, Valid, and attacks. Right? The jaw does, the, or the tongue does. Uh, the one with the tongue that Valen is just smashing with his sword. Uh, I have his know. attention. I would like to point out uh, that I have. Um, Oh yeah, your undead don't like to attack you. You're a friend of theirs. Yeah, yeah friend of the grave. Yeah, even the dead. Um, yeah, if an undead targets me, they have to make a DC 15 w- wisdom saving throw. Okay. And if they fail, they have to choose a new target or uh, risk or Check. waste the t- attack spell. This one is attacking. Uh, the so did it hit? They both engaged. The second attack did hit. Okay. Um, the first one missed uh, for a total of uh, this is nine necrotic damage. Okay. Um, oh shit. Okay. And then this is important to note this somewhere. Your maximum hit points are reduced by three. Uh huh. Uh, as you feel this thing, rest. till a long rest, um, as you feel this necrotic energy is just starting to rob you of your actual life force, and you're a bit weaker from this thing's attack, right? Uh, as the the tongue just kind of lashes out and attacks you. Um, yeah, I got I got resistant to poison, advantage on poison save, immune to disease. I ain't got shit for necrotic. Um, uh, but that's all it's gonna do. Does it have a bonus, it has a bonus action actually? Oh yeah, that's fun. I'm gonna, it's gonna do a bonus action. Um, I don't like that. As, as the tongue like <laughs> comes out and, la- and like lashes at you a couple times, uh, it's it literally takes its head and just rips it off, uh, holds it above its body, and it just starts screeching with the tongue flying everywhere and the eyes going different directions, uh, in like an almost Beetlejuice esque like just horror moment, horror show. Um, and then, like, slaps the head back on. This head just spins around 360 with the tongue flapping in all directions. Um. The weed whacker. <laughs> gross. I need, um, I need Val and Bella to make a DC-12 wisdom saving throw, please. Awful. Um, uh, this is, I'm gonna this go is a fear effect. I'm going to assume that, Bella, you've got a, uh, worse wisdom than Valen, if I had Probably. to guess. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that cosmic omen there. Okay for your wisdom save, so uh, I'm going to roll a d6 for you, and you can add it, okay? Heck yeah. 25. Cool. 25. Great, and I got a 6, so go All ahead right. and add that Ooh, to nice. whatever you rolled for your save. And remember that you get my plus 3. <laughs> I am very glad you two helped me because I rolled an eight and my uh, wisdom gives me plus zero. So uh, <laughs> 17. Um, 17 when yep. all is said and done. Yeah, that was a, a very good roll. Um, yeah, so for a moment, like both, like, Valen, this doesn't bother you. You see this stuff and you're just like, whatever. Uh, Bella, for a moment, you were like really scared as this thing just does this insane poltergeist nonsense uh, or exorcist kind of nonsense at you. Um, and then you just kind of have this wave of resolve wash over you from a combination yeah. of the cells, magic and Valen's aura. And you're like, ah, I'm not going to run. And Gray's like, I would have run, but yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> if I try to this. run, they're like right outside the door. I'm going to run right into them. I have to stay. No, no, you got this. Let's just start blasting. <laughs> uh, good move. Okay, it's out. Uh, you heard that screaming from inside and uh, like heard the commotion, but didn't actually see any of that stuff. Um, yep. Great. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go charging right in after, after Valen and uh, Bella and sort of move to the side. Um, High five on the way. Yeah, yeah got it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, oh, fun. Um, so upon coming into the room, um, I'm going to use up uh, one of my uh, wild shape in order to go into starry form. Okay. So we'll go into into archer form. Um, so I'm like, you know, uh, turn this like semi-translucent dark like ultramarine navy with the like skull patterns in uh, like, like almost clouds inside of um, and am emitting uh, bright and then sort of dim light off of it. Um, and we're going to uh, then take, uh, we're just going to bonk one of them with shillelagh. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> and okay. uh, whichever one is closest. So I guess if I'm, I'll like push over next to Bella. So I guess jaw dude will do. Yeah, the one with the crazy unhinged jaws by Bella. Yeah. The one with the effed up tongue is uh, in melee with Valen. Yeah. Great. So. Okay, so we can, we'll bonk that one because then I'm in. Can the like ranged arrow from Archer form can go hit the tongue grossness? Yeah. Um, I don't want to. And Jaw grossness. Guy hasn't gone yet, right? He has. He has not. Okay. okay. Great. So, remind me is a D8 plus four? I think. Yep. Okay. Cool. That okay? So that's a five. Um, bonking that guy. To to roll to hit. Oh no! Sorry, I jumped the gun. It's no, that okay. one's free. She just she um, just hit. <laughs> well, <laughs> the uh, do 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 plus seven. So no, that's a twenty six to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah. Isn't okay. that a net twenty though? No, I have a. I got a nineteen on it, but nice. actually, why, has a plus. Why does my screen say twenty? That's weird. Okay. Because I had a one on the d- the the. The D8. Oh, oh, yeah, it's showing total. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So what five was your damage? For the, for the bonking. Okay. Five damage for bonking. Good, uh, and then good bonk. The uh, archer puts radiant damage, which. Oh, they probably don't like that. Nice. Um, yeah, so the, the radiant arrow will go towards the guy with the tongue, and that's an 11. Okay. Radiant. That will not hit. Oh, no, I'm uh, sorry. That's. I'm, I'm still jumping the gun. She's rolling damage. <laughs> I am. Uh, do, 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 do. But that's still... That's a 13 to hit him? Uh, that will not hit. Okay, then never mind. So, the the um, arrow just goes... Okay. Yeah, there's a moment where, like, Valen and this tongue entity, like, or this tongue thing, like, separate, and the arrow just blasts between the two of them. Uh, smashes through, through, like, another window. Right. Uh, but cool, you're a chillily hit. Well done. Uh, Odette, you're up. Uh, everyone else has run in. It's just you and Gruff standing out- outside. Gruff is like doing a cartoon kind of ch- like wind up charge motion. <laughs> like it's getting ready to move. Um, <laughs> Although I don't think he'd fit in here. Probably not. <laughs> this this uh, living room is getting real crowded real quick. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, just uh, for clarification, we do not have that on Owlbear, Owlbear Rodeo right now, right? Correct. The map, not make it... Yeah, the map that is the there is behind. not. This is are. theater. Yeah. Also, uh, while we're talking about things that Owlbear is presumably incorrect on, uh, my screen says that Shambling Mound is me. And yeah, I, yeah. I was about to say, you guys should change your name by clicking on the pen logo at the top of the bottom yeah, section. I you know. Fine. <laughs> uh, I was like, sh- shambling fine. mound, huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. That sure still sounded appropriate, so I was going to leave. Odette just kind of checks to, like, is looking at Gruff and just, like, takes a step and he takes, like, another, like, 
paw it, and then she takes a step back, and then she takes a step, and he's like starts charging again, and like she kind of like sighs and looks up to the heavens. Um, she looks in through a window. Uh, how dark is it in there? Uh, it varies, right? Because like you've you've got flaming sword. Yeah, so I think there's a point where like your darkness auras go back and forth, um, right? Now, right now, Valen with the flaming sword I'm and it's like a star right form. and then dim light, though. Yeah, this whole so place like, is just like lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that yeah. uh, size again, <laughs> and like uh, I'm not helpful for you at all. Uh, the Sorry. second, the second floor is dark. Odette no thinks for a second, and <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no, she says, from the top row. <laughs> Uh, uh, she looks at Gruff and nods and then, like, looks up through the window. Can I see into the window? On the second floor? Yeah. Yeah. Can I see, can I see the interior of the inside? Uh, yeah, the scene, you can see, like, a, a light by the bedroom and some, like, silhouettes of furniture upstairs. Okay, but nothing's moving up there? No, it doesn't look like there's anything going upstairs. Um, uh, she, uh, is suddenly there and then she is suddenly not. Um, and uh, is suddenly up in the interior of the second floor. Cool. Uh, and she 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 looks about and she has her her lightning javeling out, like you know, with kind of crackling cool. with energy, and uh, she just starts creeping. You do uh, you creep about two steps, and your your foot kind of thumps against something on the floor, and you realize that there is a um, a body laying next to the bed. Someone tried to like scramble out of bed, clearly didn't make it, and just hit the ground. Um, uh, she she nods and um, uh, looking looking through the darkness. Uh, what light is on? Up here, none. Uh, the, all the lights. Mm. To, yeah, the, sorry. The lights you could see were like like frames and fixtures. Got so, it. Cool. So I was trying to describe um, the stuff in the room. Got it. Okay. Um, but looking around uh, with her dark vision, she doesn't see anything of note. No. I got some light coming up from the room, uh, the window behind you. You, have, you can see the light uh, coming up from the stairwell, right? You kind of look out. This this small mm -hmm. room. There's a hallway. You can see like the light from Valen and itself. Um, okay. But the big thing is just, yeah, it's dark up here. Someone was clearly killed in their bedroom. Didn't quite make uh, okay. it. Okay. Um, uh, she makes her way to the the stairwell. Uh, I'm still very swift with a uh, 45 speed, so yeah. uh, um, I can do acrobatics uh, as you wish. Um, no, it's not a very big house. All right. Um, and uh, uh, so she just like leaps over to the stairwell, leaps straight down the stairwell, um, uh, just so she's not losing any ground. Kind of like a child. You're like ah. I'm not going to yeah. use my moving speed. I'm going to jump down the stairs. Um, it's the so uh, Toby, Toby McGuire Spider-Man. <laughs> basically. Uh, lands at the base on point. Um, and then uh, which one looks the worse off? Uh, coming down the stairs, you would actually land right next to the unhinged jaw one. Um, you like <laughs> land behind it. <laughs> uh, instead of doing, if I see that at the top of the stairs, I would rather land on it. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, hell yeah. Teenage Mutant <laughs> game style flying kick. Yeah, hundred percent. Roll the top, bro. Um, people's elbow. Uh, that would be. Uh, that that is a 2021 20, to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, all right. Um, and then I'm going. I'm just going to do all the hits all in a row. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to. Well, remember, you should roll hit damage, hit damage, just in case it dies. I'm sorry. You should roll hit damage, hit damage, just in case it dies. Hit damage, hit damage. You're 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 completely correct. So, ooh, that's a full eight. Um, uh, plus sorry about that. Uh, plus five. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing my my uh, um spear. Sorry about that. Okay. So, got it. Uh, eight plus five. You did jumping slam. 13 mm -hmm. spears magical. Cool. Mm -hmm. and Still up. Do, 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 do. Uh, the next one. Uh, yes. Uh, six. Uh, 11 points of damage. And that is just a magical regular kick. Um, and uh, that, I think that is. What was, what'd you roll to attack? I'm sorry? Oh, I'm so attack? sorry. Uh, yes, that was a, um, a 20, 
<laughs> People just being like, maybe yeah. he won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a 20 something. 26 for the, the second attack. Yeah. And 11 points of uh, punch damage. Just Got like uh, magical punch damage and the the uh, uh, lightning javelin was um, magic, just regular magic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any more attacks? No. I have okay. to re- recalibrate. Um, I think I can burn um, Rhapsody with without as, as a free thing. Uh, it would be a bonus action, but yeah, I mean, you can just jump down and attack and punch, right? So right now, Perfect. you come down, you just spear this already, thing. Yeah, I've already used my bonus uh, action to teleport, so I don't think I can then, use, yeah. And yeah, you're, that would be the attacks. So yeah. you come down, you spear this thing through, right? And you like land kind of on top of it right next to uh, itself, mm-hmm. right? Just, um, mm-hmm. Coming from down the second floor. And then as you spear it through, you turn around and just spin kick into its face while it's, the spear mm-hmm. is still connected to its torso. And there's like a ripping noise as yeah. part of it goes back. Uh, and then it just like stares at you, grabs the spear and then rips itself the rest of the way off the spear. And there's like a big hunk of just missing torso. Uh, as it's still like standing there, uh, barely together. Um, she, she, Stays on guard, but she looks very kind of like shifty at this point. Uh, yeah, fair. So. Um, Done. It turns around. Of course. <laughs> um, and just cracks in half um, so that it's like its hands become, it becomes basically a quadruped and so it starts scuttling across the floor. Um, These are the worst Resident Evil games. <laughs> Um, and then like st- like the weird tendons start to just attack you from its a torso itself, right? Okay. As it's just the weird like limbs bubble out of it. Uh, but do me a favor first, make a DC twelve wisdom saving throw. Of course, uh, Bella, please make this. Nope, sorry, uh, it's L. Please make this as well. Great. Uh, as this thing happens right next to you, and you're like, what the? <laughs> you still have my plus three. Sorry, you said it was a saving throw. What kind? Wisdom. Wisdom of what, uh, what level? DC 12. 12. I got oh, yeah. 13. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair. Okay. Uh, it is scary. 23. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, this is horrifying, but you, oh, you oh, find your resolve and do not run. Um, How, like, uh, what is it? Convergent evolution. <laughs> uh, um. uh, Odette like, stumbles back into the wall. Uh, her form kind of shifting with shadowy energy, uh, and then like tries to push herself back and starts kind of creeping forward, yep. uneasily. Uh, and like the weird like tendons start flailing. One attacks you, uh, it misses because of your phase shift, and the other one attacks uh, itself, and unfortunately hits. Great. Uh, Uh, there's nine points of necrotic energy or damage to itself as these like tendon bone limbs just lash out at you from the middle of its like chest, basically. Uh, I'm not scared of you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, your total HP is reduced by five. Oh, okay. as then as that necrotic energy starts draining your life force away. Um, Luckily, it is out of options and actions. So Gruff is up. <laughs> Gruff does not want to run into this room because there's not enough room. So he is cheering from outside. Okay, very cool. Um, sounds good. Top of the order, uh, Valen. And my lay on hands can cure disease or poison. I'm assuming it cannot cure this necrotic thing. It cannot. Mm. All right, well, now I'm mad. Uh, so I am going to take a swing at Mr. Tongue Man. Okay. It's still just, like, you can see the lines of saliva on the walls from the from where it was spinning around. <laughs> yeah, that's like 26. Yeah, that'll hit. All right, so that is, I already forgot, 1d8 physical... Uh, so that is eight physical damage. Okay. And five fire damage, although I know it didn't really do anything. 
Okay. And now I'm going to smite him. Cool. We're only going to use a level one smite because I'm still not sure how strong these guys are. It will not like that. So that's only going to be 3d8 radiant. Oh, no, only 3d8. <laughs> oh. Eighteen radiant damage. Good Christ! Uh, <laughs> it had seventeen hit points. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't use a level two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think I think you like they run this thing through with your sword, and like it's been on fire before, so it just kind of like laughs at you, uh, and then it just the <laughs> yeah, and it just like it like, ignites with radiant light and just burns away from the inside out. It's like ah! um. And in the place of this weird corpse is a strange, uh, yeah, uh, it's a strange bluish pink translucent, uh, fucked up looking non Euclidean jellyfish just floating there, uh, above where the pieces of this corpse were. Okay. Not going to attack the jellyfish yet. Are Hoping it's a good guy. Uh, like I am going to say that that smite was very inspiring. Yeah. So that was dope as hell. Uh, Fourteen hit points between me and Itzel. Okay. Uh, so I only need uh, oh with my minus I only need four. So you get ten hit points. Great, that's perfect. I'm up to temporary hit points, but. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, Very cool. we're still reduced by five. Okay. Um. All right. Anybody I guess second, second attack, I will backhand the other one. Cool. Yeah, it's still like just skittering around on like it's on his four limbs, doing doing all sorts of weird crap. Um. That is. 14 to hit. 14 will hit. Oh, hey, cool. On the on the button. <coughs> Six physical magic. Okay. Fire. <coughs> five, five fire. <coughs> um, not, a, not a great attack this time, but there are other people to hit it. It is not the most intense attack you've ever done, but this thing literally rip itself off of Odette's spear and was barely hanging on as is. So I think you come in with your um, second attack and just like cleave it and the two halves just Ugh. fall over. Uh, just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and eventually it just stops moving. Just your... <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and again, you see another weird spectral... Um, jellyfish just floating there cool uh if anyone would like to make a knowledge religion check you are more than welcome to i would absolutely like to do this thing that seems like something you'd think a paladin would be good at but i am new at this i, was say, I, was like, I, I can try but I'm i got a six. Oh, 19 oh okay, okay. nine i got a 10 Ten? Nah. Um, it's, uh, you have heard of strange creatures uh, that kind of resemble like spectral jellyfish. Um, they are in fact demonic entities that like to possess corpses and take them oh. for joy rides. Uh, they do sorts of, they get a lot of uh, entertainment in scaring the living shit out of people. Uh, and of course, killing them. Um, so Valen, Valen killed this guy yeah, and then was holding yeah, back and was like, Jared maybe the jellyfish is friendly. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, those, those aren't any better. Um, yeah. Mm. Like that's the, that's the problem. The jellyfish are the problem. Get rid of the, like. Yeah. How are they going to attack us? It, well, yes, because they would like us to die, but they'll also occupy our corpses after we do that. Um, o Odette 
looks at everybody and like looks at the jellyfish. She's like, "Can they hear us?" <laughs> oh, uh, it's all you knew with a nineteen. You know that they are sentient. Yeah, Yay. Like, well, yeah. Though they understand. I don't know. I, I don't know what hearing looks like from the like, but they they understand. Um, like, uh, yeah. Uh, well, luckily, Itzel, I believe it's your turn. <laughs> uh, Odette quickly does this. She She's like... <laughs> like that. Wait. <laughs> How are we um, already to Itzel? I didn't go this round. Yeah, it, it is Bella's turn. Oh, yeah. never mind. So, I'm wrong. And, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah Valen. Jeez. You're not even in the room. Go. I don't know where you are. I'm in the room. Yeah, she's in the room. Yeah. Never mind. Everyone, everyone's in the awkward jellyfish room except for Croft. Um, <laughs> so, we're all uh, yeah. here, but, We're going to have to have a serious here the whole talk time. about your teamwork abilities after this fight, Valen. <laughs> um, I had that kind of Odette tries to do pantomime to relay the information she knows about a body upstairs. Cool. To let everybody know that there's another vehicle. So... Mm-hmm. By going sweet. So Bella, it is your move. These things are, um, like I said, one of these is floating kind of close to you, right? It's this large, um, translucent jellyfish uh, with way too many tendrils, and like doesn't quite make sense when you look at it. Uh, it's definitely not. You know, I don't know why I bother to look at my character sheet. As if I'm ever going to do anything besides cast Eldritch Blast. It's but... a warlock, baby. <laughs> <laughs> cast Eldritch Blast. Cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <laughs> you should have an in case of emergency blow a spell slot to do something big, which I like chromatic orb. Pick an yeah. element and it does like fucking four D eight damage. Yeah. Or hex. Hex will help all of the Eldritch Blasts in tandem. So it's like fireball, but, it, but that's just me. <laughs> but when we're fighting undead, she's been hesitant to use hex and add necrotic damage. Oh yeah. well, completely. Because it might heal sense. them. But is, these are and, demons. They're but, yeah. demons. I don't know. Well, one way to find out. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, would you would you would you begrudge a fighter for being like I cast sword this round? No, no. I cast fist. No, yeah, no shame. Send it. All right. Well, we'll try. We'll try hex. Let's see what happens. What do they get disadvantage on? Um, I'm going to oh. say they get disadvantage on... You might want to do strength, because my thunderous smite gives them a strength save to push. Help. Sure, why not? Let's do strength. Heck yeah. It's something. Okay. Oh no! You had a great name for your donation, and you're sad everyone didn't get, didn't get to enjoy it. I'm very sad about that. Also, thank you for your donation. Let me uh, add the advantage to the pool. So, Thank yeah, you. So- Sorry, the alert is not working. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the alert tonight, but uh, mm-hmm. what, was, what was the cool name? Go ahead and roll your Eldritch Blast. Bow-bow. Yeah. Roll to attack first. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's roll damage like you, you know, don't... <laughs> like you own the place. All right. So first Eldritch Blast. Thoroughly Euclidean Jellyfish. That's very good. Is um, 25 to hit. Oh, definitely hit. And that is going to be... I'll give you a hit. If it starts with a two, it's probably hidden if it's double digit. Woohoo! <laughs> um, so that is going to be 14 force damage and four necrotic damage. All right. I'm going to go roll. I don't like that. Why? <laughs> not, not a fan. All right. Um, you blast it, right? Blast a huge yeah. hole in this thing. Um, yeah. It starts to sink down into the floor. That's no, not the same no. as dying at all. Get back here, you little... <laughs> you, have a, you have a second attack. Um, Get back here, young man. We're not done talking to you. <laughs> I'm not done with you. Yeah, okay, there's nothing I can do to, like, capture it, so I will just have to try an Eldritch Blast and see if that takes it out. Destroy! Destroy. Go for it. (laughs) Does that disengage? Do I get an attack of opportunity for it trying to get away? No. This is something different. 
No. no. Okay, and that is going to be a 27 to hit. Okay. Great. Which will end up doing... Come on, land. Can we tell if the necrotic damage... Uh, so that's going to be eight force and two necrotic damage. Uh, let's see. The necrotic damage does seem to be doing something. Uh, as you blast into it, it starts to like sink through the floor, like the tendrils disappear first, and it's like jellyfish body is not quite uh, below the surface yet. You blast it again, and like it and part of the floor is just blown apart. Uh, and you see that like weird ectoplasm of like jellyfish jelly just spread all oh, over the floor like as it explodes. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well done. Um, that was the gross. Great. It's <laughs> a crazy <laughs> jaw one. Yeah. Um, that was the jaw one. Okay. The one in front of Valen uh, is going to actually take the disengage action. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's just going to float through the room. Uh, it just okay. floats upward to the ceiling. So you can take a swing at it. Okay. Can I as well? Uh, uh, you were closer to the other one. I'm going to use one of the party's advantages. Okay. Okay. For this nat one. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it was almost a nat 20. That would have been so good. 15 to hit. That'll hit. All right. That is uh, 11 physical and 12 fire. Wow, double sixes. Nice. Um, okay. A large chunk of tendrils are like cut off by your sword and like flop under the ground, just kind of ooze there and cover like the back part of the couch and like a little um, side table. And the rest of it. Huh? Add a smite. Are you going to add a smite? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I am going to add a smite. Is this an undead or a fiend? You said it's... It, it is absolutely a fiend. It is a fiend. Okay. So yeah. this is 3d8 radiant damage. Woohoo! You, you can pick that up from your celestial uh, vision. I don't have to know. It's going to get hit. Uh, 16 radiant. Okay. So what you see is... Um, We'll move the camera around to the second floor, right? Where this thing kind of has floated through the floor and like appears next to that corpse. And you see like some of the tendrils just grab the corpse and it starts to like pull itself into the body. Um, And then like the sword just comes through the damn roof (laughs) and explodes. And like the gelatin is just exploded everywhere instead. So the body like starts to get up and just slumps off to the side uh, as this, Crazy fiend is uh, is destroyed and smited. Yeah, all this stuff, by the way, is from the monster manuals. I'm not homebrewing crap at this point. This is all just crazy shit Stop <laughs> that exists. Down. Stop brewing so. at home. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you destroy these uh, strange demons. Woo-hoo. Yes. <laughs> all right so now we know these things are a lot tougher than they looked normally as a paladin i see zombies and you give them a backhand and they fall over uh mm-hmm. as we're going through town we might want to avoid these yeah these things in large numbers could be very bad i understood and uh... <laughs> that's like i'm assuming that you uh hit the body that was upstairs yeah, I think it was going for it. Good call. I go. Oh, mm, yes. Um, and she, like, kind of goes upstairs to see if, like, you know, confirm the kill. <laughs> confirm. Yeah, you go upstairs. Um, you stop short of, like, stepping in the gelatin on the oh. carpet, right? As parts of it just kind of explode, and you see, like, the weird ectoplasm just slowly evaporating. Um, the corpse has moved about a foot. From where you saw it, uh, mm-hmm. it's just like slumped over awkwardly on its back now instead of on its face originally. Uh, but yep, the weird jellyfish has been has been destroyed. Harsh, <laughs> you hear best. a sound of disgust from upstairs and like a, like a pitter patter uh, of a point she was coming downstairs. Yes, excellent work. 
So what next? All right, next uh, we continue with plan A, but more quietly to avoid these things. Yes. Um, Odette uh, uh, does does a dance to make everybody a lot more silent. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so plus 10 to everybody's stealth. Yay! Yay. As long okay. as you're nearby. All right. I believe our temporary HP go away now. Or no, uh, they're too long rest. Oh, they are? Hell yeah. Very nice. So yeah, uh, you're in this you're in this house, you know, there's not much here to get settled in. Like I said, there's a couple like you know, some reading material, there's a newspaper, there's like some um, canned food in the kitchen, but like this family clearly didn't make it. Whatever happened here, they just they're done. Um, nothing of real value though around. All right. Anything anything no. to loot on the bodies? So okay. Unfortunately not. All right. We're to yeah. plan lower case A. Yeah, that's <laughs> so you're now stealthy. And I guess what's the plan, right? So you can it seems like you can move around because you kind of moved stealthily through the earlier parts of the town and um, had no issues getting to this house, right? So, so we want to get everyone's gear that they didn't bring to the wedding. Yes. Uh, so we have to go to wherever they were staying, and we want to get Burbel. That yes. was that was at um uh, Yusuf's house, yeah. correct? Uh, which is convenient because mm-hmm. Yusuf lives in the Blue Lake District. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's it. right. Um. The only other location that I was tracking of importance was you go into the Temple of Tempest that is down in the Protector's Enclave, right? Um, but I'd like to get, let's see, you cast Pass Without a Trace. That gives you all a lot of stealth. Um, describe to me how you are all stealthy. Like, what is your plan here? Are you just literally trying to just blend into the crowd like you just grab a wagon and just like walk into town with the rest of the traffic and just try to like just look normal and natural uh are you actually like sneaking from house to house like a scooby-doo villain like what is the what's the vibe here what am i looking at okay so we were at the the house with like the observation that we've made among um the city is that people are going about their day as if this were normal right yeah you can like look out the window as you're hanging out and see people like traveling and people on horseback so going by. The mailman's out, out, like putting a short rest after we dispatched this jellyfish loveliness while we were looking for canned peaches yeah. in the cupboards or whatever. You easily um, take an hour. Sure. Okay. Um, the uh, you know, like ooh, oatmeal. Um, yeah, the <laughs> maple and brown sugar. It's my favorite. But um, the so Cell's gonna go I mean if we want to blend in stealthy wise like get a blanket I was gonna say it was a little like like Thor (laughs) ride gruff it's like I can do like I can wild shape into a horse like if we want to make it look like we're who wants to ride know. Itzel? <laughs> oh no! Uh, I got I got to do the thing now. Thank you. <laughs> the phrasing? Because uh, if you don't do it, I will. <laughs> I got I to gotta do it. <laughs> don't let me tap the sign. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can wall chip into a horse. Um, then you have a horse and a goat, and then people can yeah, kind of blend riding in. Riding horses are like a it's like a mm-hmm. CR like one fourth, and I'm up to CR one now because I'm. Woo! Um, can you so make a like, war horse? Maybe. I don't remember what the CR is for war horse. I'd have to look it up. But the, I think they're more resistant to fear is the only thing. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, hold on. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you're all pretty resistant to fear because that was some yeah. scary nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. nonsense. We're a little right. shaken. <laughs> um, uh, when, yes, I can. So totally fine doing war horse. Um, yeah, uh, okay. I can. I mean, it might also blend in a little bit better with with Gruff. 
Um, yeah. But then, like, not only do we sort of look like we're going about usual business, but we're a little bit more mobile in the, you know, oh, hey, fiendish jellyfish, great. Yeah. Um, Gruff's movement speed is 60, and with my aura of alacrity, it's 70. So, and he can dash for, what the hell is that, 100? Yeah, That's, I was gonna uh, say, if, uh, if I'm in Warhorse shape, it's also 60 for me, so. Yeah, y'all are fast. Yeah, we can dash at 105, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we, you, you, go ahead. When, when we used our, our um, Eyes of the Grave, were people still walking around all normal and happy, or? Uh, no, as, as you use the Eyes of the Grave, like, and you start looking around, you can see there are people still walking around acting Mm -hmm. normal and happy. Like there's still a guy with like a satchel delivering mail and he's just like putting mail into charred mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like whistling as he like steps over, you know, you see, looks like he's like stepping over a puddle, but it's actually just a corpse on the ground. He's just like, (laughs) you know, he doesn't seem to notice that. They're obviously bought into the illusion, but they're not part of the illusion. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like whatever seemed to be affecting Odette seems to be affecting these people as well. Um, and that there is there is no tragedy in Neverwinter, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> kind of deal, and and that is no longer affecting me, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, cool. So it it definitely was just, just witnessing whatever that was. I don't think that was defense magic, but uh, that's crazy. Okay, cool. Uh, Odette says if that works. Whatever we want to do, as long as we do it swiftly and quietly, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Edsel turns into a horse, right? And all of you proceed through town. I, lo- I love this plan. This is actually very good. Um, um, I'm right, so, a pretty Appaloosa buckskin. It's great. Yeah. Who's riding whom? Because we definitely need to be mounted if we're going to take advantage of the speed. We're not just going to take off and leave you guys behind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gruff's strength is 18, so somebody else can hop on here with me. Uh, Warhorse okay. is also 18, so yeah. Okay. We... yeah Valid and Odette on one horse, Bella on Etel. <laughs> that seems cool. to work. All right. I'm going to roll some dice. Nonchalantly. I will definitely wow. mess with that every once in a while. Like, I'll do a little like trot hop every couple of, like, you know. <laughs> Just. <sighs> That's 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 pretty rude, since uh, <laughs> Bella is not exactly the most uh, experienced equestrian. <laughs> so, how's your dexterity, though? <laughs> uh, possible. Equexterity? Is that something? Is that something? Nah, that's not something. That's not good. That's not it was pretty good. <laughs> that's. I'll take. I'll take the. <laughs> You're take it's the an, yeah, it's an awk manteau. The awkward portmanteau. Ah, yes, that's very good. Um. I'm trying to pull up one thing real quick. We should make an Aukman toe meme. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I rolled a bunch of rolls. I, I noticed it makes me unhappy. There were some faces there, yeah. <laughs> uh, Are we doing group your- rolls or... I'm just, I'm giving you a lot of advantages with uh, Pass Without Trace and trying to blend in naturally, right? Um, Being super chill, super cool. Yeah. Kind of cool. Right, and yeah. us, not at all worried that we're walking through a demon infested rebel of a town. Nope. That, yeah. that, we're that totally is chill, not guys. Cognito. Yeah. <laughs> there are. <laughs> a lot of strange things you see heading through town, right? Um, You're starting to see kind of the difference between what is being projected in this illusion and what is obviously real. And it is absurd just how many people seem to be trapped in this false reality, right? All of them, I would expect. A good number, right? The thing that's hard about this is not trying to move to the city because a lot of people just, you know, they give you a wave or they don't even acknowledge you. They're just going about their business, right? The hardest part about this entire trip are those moments where you see things, like capital T things, moving through the city, right? 
You see things in alleyways. You see things in buildings. You see things that fly overhead. You see things that literally slink right by you. Um, and having to not react to these nightmarish monstrosities that are also moving throughout the city. Um, some of them even dimming the actual light around them as they come around corners and just moving in a pool of darkness until they pass away and the light comes back. Um, it is nerve wracking to say the least, but they seem to pay you no mind. Cool. You reach further into the blue Lake district uh, and end up on a familiar path towards the Nasiri house. As you're coming up um, towards the actual front area itself with that beautiful fountain and that kind of circular drive area that is set, uh, you can hear some type of guttural conversation occurring. Uh, It's just growls, gurgles, grunts. weird kind of noises that make your hair kind of stand up on the back of your neck. The sort of things you'd see in the Stranger Things subtitles. Yes. (laughs) Grunting, grunting, squelching squishes. (laughs) Undulating, uh, squishily. (laughs) Yes. Squelching conversation. (laughs) Squelching conversation squelched wetly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it is... uh, I don't think a language any of you all speak, but I could be wrong. It's clearly Um, speech. It sounds like someone is talking, but uh, what languages do you all speak? I'm pretty sure this is not on your list. Um, Common and Dwarvish. Celestial, Common, Druidic, Elvish, and Sylvan. Celestial? Yeah, close. I've got Infernal. Uh, that's close, but no. <laughs> it's almost, it's almost right, right direction. <laughs> the answer we were looking for was squelching. So, <laughs> does anybody, does anybody uh, speak squelchy? Sadly, uh, no. I missed picking that one when I was making my character. Oh, I I missed that. Yeah, I need. Um, I need to find that book. Uh, squelching one hundred and one. Yeah. yeah. If, if you had to guess, just based fire on... up Duolingo. Get threatening messages. <laughs> if you don't do your daily squelching exercises. <laughs> it, just, it just sounds like um, <laughs> it. It, simp- it just sounds like sponge noises. That's all. <laughs> if you had it sounds to- like a spell description sponge for uh, uh, for uh, 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 hunger of Hadar. Oh yeah, <laughs> gotta hate the that. moist, I lo- sucking noises. Yeah. Uh, I both love and hate that spell. Um, <laughs> No, so you can all guess at this point, dealing with demons, that like this is probably some form of a, of a vessel, a vessel, right? Uh, but it is a harsh, guttural language that like literally sounds like nails going down a chalkboard and kind of puts you on that weird, nervous edge as you hear it. Um, but you can hear it. There are sounds like two things kind of talking to one another in the courtyard outside of Yusef's house by that fountain. Should we grab Burb? <coughs> Should we grab Burble on the way out? <laughs> you know my my opinion about Burble. I think he is still dangerous. Yes, he might be dangerous. <laughs> That's the to good other thing. <coughs> and, but... Are we not dangerous, Odette? You are dangerous. Well, thank you. <laughs> But as far as you can tell, these things have not noticed you yet. So, all right, let's let's go inside. Yes, you can go around the back area. Okay, they start kind of working your way around the back. Um, I will ask everyone now to make a uh, stealth check, right? Because you were starting to, to sneak around a little bit. Um, you know that you can get to the back. The back area of the Yusuf house is like a small orchard and garden, right? You know, you can kind of hop a wall and get into that area there. Um, that is, so I get a, I get a, a plus 1d4 uh, for being oh. shadow marked. Uh, and I also have, what is it? That is and we have the plus nine. 10. 
We have the so plus ten. Like, if I'm still in wild shape, <laughs> like that's one. It's a fourteen flat. Okay. So I have a I have I have a total of a plus twenty four right now. <laughs> oh <laughs> lord! I rolled a net. I rolled a net twenty. So uh, okay. I'm a ghost. <laughs> Where the hell did Odette go? <laughs> it just vanishes. Like you see her You're inside. Of my goat. <laughs> <laughs> She's just inside, waving to you from like little <laughs> like uh, <laughs> the little window you were sitting at uh, having brunch. Um, cool. Anybody right, roll I, up? I have to roll with disadvantage, but I got a fifteen and a fifteen. Horse. Okay, you rolled a fourteen, but you're a horse. <laughs> so with the plus ten, twenty-five. Right. Cool. Good lord. Uh, and then Bella. Uh, and what do I get to add to my roll? Plus my, 10. my modifier, and then it's a plus ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is a stealth. Do check, I get correct? to add ten to that? Because then it's a twenty-four. Yes, because you did. Oh, then yes. Okay. Warm, okay. I thought I'm still very stealthy. 20. I thought you did. Okay. Go ahead. No, Quiet. No, worse. Cool. Uh, with all those modifiers, I have a 21. Cool. Uh, yeah. All Don't of you in this like. Don't be suspicious. This Don't awkward be group. Uh, you managed to get over the back of this uh, this wall to the uh, mysterious state to kind of work your way through the orchard and then you work your way uh, inside. Right. <laughs> As we're walking through the orchard, I'm going to, like, grab an apple and just start munching it. Okay. Uh, as you were How are you <laughs> grabbing as a horse? I would just like to know this, the answer to this. That, not with, with the, the just, like, with the face. Oh, yeah. Just, like, go yeah, on. Like, neck reaches out. <laughs> like, pulls one off of the branch. The branch, nice. like, flaps back a little bit. Like, yeah. Perfect. Uh, you, Wax you Bella know? in the face be like, I would have grabbed you one if you asked. As you... As you scramble stones. inside, yeah. uh, <laughs> you see that I grab one for Gruff. He has an apple too. Mm. Gruff is very happy, munching happily. There's an apple. You look away. The apple is gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get inside as you're as you're coming as you're heading to the house. You can see the front area, and it looks like there are two strange-looking uh, bipedal toad creatures with like a bunch of weird spikes. Um, and like other sharp appendages coming just out of their skin um, and like weird long claws uh, that are just out in that front area, kind of like gutturally squishing their conversation, right? Let's just, I would let's just like just to say, I hate the city. Burn. Yeah, let's just burn <laughs> this around. We don't need to be messing with that at yeah. all. Um, <laughs> as you, and then you head inside. Right. Once cool. we're inside, I'm going to use the uh, the sense again, my divine sense. Cool. Um, yeah, you take a second, take a breath. You use your divine sense. Um, the house is very quiet. Okay. Wait a few moments and then... Oh, your hair looks really good. Um, Did she go for the pink? Going for the pink, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's you right away. <laughs> The unexpected translation of the abyssal conversation. <laughs> did she go for the pink? I think she did, yeah. <laughs> Compliments the spikes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Brings the whole outfit together, you know. Um, you do not sense ectoplasm pink any or, fiends or undead in this area. Perfect. Okay. What about celestials? No celestial ladder. Well, gruff. <laughs> uh, but it seems like the house is empty. Okay. Uh, you kind of go inside. Yeah. Uh, your stuff is up in the guest rooms, right? Right where you all left it. Be able to very quickly gather your things. Uh, you can see there are a couple things that look like they've been grabbed um, at some point very quickly as well. A couple things pissing off shelves. Um, but you can manage to gear back up and start. Um, cool. Heading you out. I need all of you to make a perception check, please. I got my sack of marbles back. You have all of, all of your gear back that you had previously. Mm-hmm. Right. Perception, you said? Perception, please. 11. Mm, not great. Mm. Seems fine. 22. I'm checking my marbles. Okay. Uh, Four. 22. Ugh. 
10. Okay. Uh, Edzel, as you're grabbing your stuff, right, kind of checking out your gear again, um, your window kind of overlooks the front area, uh, and you hear bits and pieces of that same, you know, uh, abyssal conversation, right? And then you hear a very confused <laughs> kind of noise uh, and some splashing and struggling. Good boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll like Herbal go to the side of the this. window and like kind of see if we can like look askance down into the courtyard. For Yeah. Uh, you look down and you see one of these weird like blade toad creatures has been just ripped into the fountain and is now just being held underwater. <laughs> and the other one is just like wildly waving its arms around and like running around the fountain sides being like chased by splashes of water. Mergle, urgle, urgle, urgle. I, I'm going to like whistle like, like real loud just to like, you know, and then kind of. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I'm going to roll thing. Yeah, like, I'm going to, like, tuck uh, back into the window, but, like, yeah. You, you whistle right, real loud. Keep the, going. Yeah. The other weird uh, toad monster, like, turns in the direction of the whistle, and it's just grabbed by the water and pulled into the <laughs> to the fountain. Distraction. Um, and just starts, like, splashing around. You see, like, the weird, like, clawed feet and hands, like, coming out up from the water, and, like, every now and then it's, like, manages to get its breath uh, it's like face above the surface, take a breath, and just keeps being slammed back down. Um, <laughs> Have fun. Um, yeah. Feel free to mess with them for as long as you want. <laughs> right. Are you uh, saying that in so I will be looking for a canteen, whatever we used before, just yeah, just okay. in case. But I mean, obviously, yeah. Burble's got it handled here. But if he wants to come along for the ride, yeah. so uh, the rest of you manage to rearm uh, without. Incident. What do you do now? You're also kind of standing in the kitchen, same place where you had that brunch about a day and a half ago, right? Kind of looking over the balcony, over the city, a uh, little lake in the distance. Should we go liberate Burble? I mean, he's all, he's having fun, but... It's hell's going to, like, skip into the kitchen and be like, you want to watch something fun? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a horse right now? No. <laughs> a horse, <laughs> horse gets into the kitchen. <laughs> you know, like how I imagine horse... getting upstairs would have been somewhat difficult in this form. And horse whistling. Horses um, <laughs> <laughs> can get upstairs ah, super horses easy. Can whistle. They make can like horse a weird, whistle like, through their teeth thing. Um, <laughs> the, um, I don't know if I believe you on that one. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody um, knows. The... Everybody's. Go ahead. They make a <laughs> Um, no, I imagine that, like, when it was clear that we had to, like, go through the actual house, like, it's all kind of, like, wild shape dropped horse and, like, like, uh, like, morphed back and, like, grabbed Bella, like, in, like, a piggyback thing and then dropped her. Uh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you are the, you are the largest member of the party. <laughs> um, yep. And, uh, yeah, so, like, skips back in. It's like, want to see something fun. <laughs> And we'll like, like open the shutters from the kitchen out to the courtyard and be like, check yeah. my burble found some toys. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see in the fountain, Burble's just like clearly drowning these two toad demons. <laughs> um, do we help? Guess that's just happening. For Burble? When you say help, do you mean the toad demons or do you mean Burble? Because no. <laughs> Burble's got rolls her eyes yeah. painfully. <laughs> she says, Burble, of course. I mean, I know Burble's having fun, but yeah. we do need to go. So yeah, um, go stab his doors. So if we, if I can find like the canteen that uh, uh, Yusef had used before to like carry Burble out of the the dungeon bit, mm -hmm. um, and assuming that Burble is done having his fun, or at least like is at a good pause place. Um, <laughs> It's all like walk in the courtyard and sort of offer like if you want to come, like this the state of the city is not fantastic, but so we're gonna we're gonna get out into the world for a while. But you've got things handled here, so if you like your fountain, you don't have to go anywhere. But if you want to change the scenery, 
I mean, I will walk up yeah. to the side and start stabbing the fish in a barrel. Oh, <laughs> by, by the time you all get out there, these, thing, these things are just floating face down. Like, they're just done. Um, you just <laughs> stab them a couple of times with good measure. Like, they don't move. Um, and Verbal just, like, pokes its little watery head up and just is like, and just goes for the canteen. Um, all right. I'm not going to put the top on, like, tight, so you can get out if you want to, but, like, we'll, like, not screw on the top, but just, like, put it on. Um, yeah. Very cool. You, you know, if uh, you can communicate with Bubba, correct? Only sort of. So I have what were we using before? Like the like, basically could understand like my like Sylvan to primordial kind of like, like it's like we're you know we can make more or less like the sign language at each other bad. Um, you had, I, didn't I you have a control water spell? I'm saying I just can't understand back other yeah. than the gesture. It, it would have been really yes. nice if we were able to question Barbell about what has happened here. I mean, we know it's magic, I mean, but... Yeah. We'll have to make sure to teach it the alphabet what? while we're out. Hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> the... <laughs> We'll set up a like, uh, what's it called? A communication board. We can, it'll be great. Um, I love it. Letters the, in the water. Uh, just see. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, yeah, okay. There we go. We'll, we'll set up the hexadecimal thing. It'll be great. Um, <laughs> so as of right now, you have, you have all your stuff. You have Burbel. Uh, you have two weird demon corpses floating in this fountain. Um, Odette Everything knows. seems to be looking up. Odette so, knows. People. Oh, go ahead. so the plan to hit the temple, these people are enthralled, but they're not in danger. So I don't think there's anything we can really do to help them right now. Well, so the, the for, cause I, I did do well in the religion role earlier, the spectral jellyfish demons, like they, they inhabit corpses. Do they kill things to create the horde corpses that they inhabit, or do they only go after stuff when they're? Uh, on, on a nineteen, you would know they're kind of drawn to the death itself. Uh, they're less okay. interested in killing things; they're more interested in scaring things because the fear is tasty. Okay. They just happen to grab bodies to do that because yeah. they think, you know, that's funny. Yeah. So, um, but there's definitely a level of danger that exists two people in this city but compared to the wholesale slaughter that was yesterday this is yeah. probably better yeah <laughs> like without liberating the whole city there's nothing in immediately we can do we need to get out of here it is true um um can odette we wanted to stop the by the, ha the ballet any of us know like i don't know if that's a religion or a but like for, for what Check out the frogs. The yeah. Oh, what are they? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a knowledge for the loot. Okay. Where the hell's my monster made? Oh. I got a four. Uh, I'm, I got a 22. I'm not going to jinx myself by making comments on them, but I got a 22. This, this is a uh, religion? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Colin looks over at Itzel and says, I think they're frogs. <laughs> uh, Mighty big frogs around these parts. <laughs> I rolled a fourteen. Tastes good if you fry the legs up and dip them in ketchup. Yep. Um, uh, it's a roll of twenty-two. I rolled a twenty. It's a twenty-two. Gotcha. Oh, Dad, it's a both of you are kind of aware of what these things are. Dad, you don't know if they're called specifically, but there's a type of uh, a weird fiend um, known specifically for it's like. It, it looks like a toad, but it doesn't have any, like, the toad qualities. Like, it doesn't swim or have any stuff like that. Uh, but the most dangerous thing is the fact that they're just covered in spikes and claws. Uh, and they're absurdly fast, right? Um, poison? They are... They are not poisonous. Actually, a thing you all would notice, though, is they emit a pretty terrible stench. Um, even standing close by, right? And you kind of like move away to get downwind. That's fine, but you realize like getting that close to it would probably make you very sick. Mm. Um, well, we've got uh, corpses in front of us. Is there a gland? Edsel, uh, 
These things are called uh, Hezru. Right, and they're large, um, large demons that are pr they're pretty damn tough. They're pretty resilient to magic, um, and they are very dangerous in melee. And you said they're fast, yeah. Yeah. So, but they are not very smart, <laughs> and they can't breathe underwater. Mm -hmm. They cannot. <laughs> Um, yeah, but what they lack, they lack in brains, they well then make up for in brawn. They will tear you limb from limb if they get a hold of you. And as you're looking at these things, I mean, they are huge. They're like 10 foot tall razor toads. Um, so they're scary. But they're not c carrying anything. There's nothing to loot on their bodies. No, nope. it's like a green, it's like very greenish uh, and reddish skin. But it's not. They're just basically naked. There's nothing on them. Uh, all I know is these, I have read about these, they are toads <laughs> that are fiends, and they are sharp and fast. That is all I know. All right. Odette wanted to hit the ballet. I, I did. Uh, it's all, did you uh, relay all that info to us? Uh, yeah, it's been like, well, like now that I'm getting a... Like, I think, I think, though, don't get too, too close to the, I mean, they're underwater, so maybe it won't matter right now, but I think it'd make you sick if you get mm -hmm. too. This is a, these are Hezru. Um, they're very tough, and they're fast, and uh, I don't, I don't remember with, but magic doesn't always work on them. Um, but they can't breathe underwater. Mm -hmm. Well, like, pat the canteen. The ballet studio would be nice to stop by, but if I can only think that is the only place that I think Lady Alora would have gone. The only other thing I can think of is to open the book and try to write her, but she has not written me. As you kind of look at your paths through the city. Um, as you're set up for everything in the protector's enclave, right? You run into, uh, let me pull the map up. Uh, you'll actually run into, yeah, you'll run into the temple first and then heading further south, you'll actually hit the ballet studio, right? So if you want to, that seems to be the best order to take it in. Uh, as you cross one of the bridges, kind of head towards like the House of Knowledge into that area is where the uh, Temple of Tempest is. And a little further south, closer to the like the uh, the Hall of Justice area is where the uh, theater district is. Mm -hmm. right. Hall yeah. of Justice. Yeah. The, the, okay. the Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Oh. So just to give you a like best order of things to to go through right um but to recall on how you want to visit it the academy royale de danse can wait if we hit the temple first there will be far more formidable people there oh shit i need to hit the temple to get the hilt <laughs> oh, i fucking course. forgot <laughs> i was wondering i was just like i mean you, you know you do you but like you might want to get the relic <laughs> The relic that I'm supposed to be focused on? Yeah, I should grab that on the way. <laughs> <laughs> A brilliant idea. Oops. <laughs> but, uh, you will have clerics and other warriors of, uh, of, the, of the God of War. Perhaps they have resisted it somehow. This they would all... They would also have this aura of protection, and they would also have the divine sense to see everything. So mm -hmm. either A, they were enemy number one, or B, they're safe. So uh, go in there. Okay. Yes. Um, do you wish me to, uh, or has this taken like an entire hour? Has the uh, the, si the the kind of like... Um, do we have to re-up yeah, the stealth? Pass without a trace worn off. 
Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, you would have been pretty quick and deliberate about going through the house, getting your stuff, being like, okay, here's the plan. Let's move, right? Uh, especially as, like, weird shit is lurking about. I don't think you all want to stay in a place very long. Yeah. Nope. So uh, I think you're able to, again, start moving through the city. Only this time, uh, it's all, are you back in, like, human form? At, at the moment, I can, yeah, like... I'm just curious as to how you're moving through, right? If we need to keep moving through the city, I'm fine wild shaping back. That's... Okay. Yep. Resort back to the original plan. Mm -hmm. Turn back into a horse, right? Mm -hmm. Start riding through the city. Grab another <laughs> apple on the way out. <laughs> like like wow. horses do, you remove your hoof, you use your human hand to get the <laughs> apple, you put it in your mouth... <laughs> Take off your shoes, yes. You, well, you take off your, your, your horse hoof shoes in order to skip into kitchens and do, do stuff. <laughs> you can polite. call them horseshoes. <laughs> yes, they are horseshoes. <laughs> I would like uh, you all to make roll perception as you move to the city again. Again, you see it's just like strange things. You see weird nightmarish creatures but none of them pay oh, you any mind not that bad 17 net 20 okay well done sir 17 for me so with my skill that would five. be a 23 <laughs> five that was just i've been out of the time of her life like yeah just like hey where we going <laughs> you know bella is holding on because she's not good on a horse <laughs> yeah <laughs> Got her face just buried in gruff, or I guess it's still like mane. It's still mane. Right, yeah, it's like hold on to your life. Um, Valen, your instincts are rather well honed. Um, it is difficult to to ID where this thing is, uh, but something is following you. Deliberately. You sense it more than you see it. Okay. Um, kind of get that weird tingle in the back of your neck. You look back. You think you see a shadow. It's gone. Right. You think you see a silhouette in the second story window somewhere. You look to confirm it. It's not there. Right. Uh, but it seems like something is watching you. All right, I'm I'm gonna tell people. I'm gonna do the old tell your friends. Don't look now. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Let's start looking. <laughs> Don't look there. There. That's where we're not supposed to be paying attention right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think something's following us. We just need to get to the temple now. I'm not gonna stop and try to catch it. We're not gonna figure out what it is. We're gonna get to the temple. Good focus. Okay. Yes. Maybe a little faster. <laughs> okay. Um, if, if you see it attack, actually, I will just keep... <laughs> she, like, repositions herself on Gruff. And she's like, I will simply observe from behind. So, And okay. she just tries to keep an eye out, just nodding at people, waving... Okay. I mean, I, ha I do have alert, so I can't be surprised. That's good to know. <laughs> um, now, nah, you start getting close to the temple, right? Uh, you kind of accelerate your pace. And I think take a couple extra turns so you're not just heading down all these main streets, right? A couple... couple uh, side roads. Yeah, side roads, a little more stealthy, right? And as you're not doing back alleys, but side doing, roads. Yeah, side roads are fine. Back alleys are where you die. Uh, as you the temple, as the temple is in sight, and you're getting prepared uh, to head in, um, you see that the front doors are just wide open, right? As you're kind of looking at it from across the street. Are um, the guards outside? You see no guards. What you do see um, 
is a man in what looks like some type of modified plate armor, right? With large gauntlets, uh, specifically for just swinging and punching, right? Uh, he is, of course, bald with that, like, broken in kind of nose and, like, cauliflower ear. Uh, nice. It's, you recognize uh, Father Stone when you see him. You know, he's wearing, like, just full battle regalia at this point. Uh, and he is just, like, as stealthily as he, as he can, clanking his way around, like, the side of the, of the church. And is, like, taking a breath and you can see some like glowing energy coming off of him, and he like turns and darts into the church. Um, okay, Father Stone is a war lion. I would not want to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it looked like That's he was. Okay. It looked like he was getting amped up to fight something. He darts into the church. Yep. <laughs> so when he was standing outside, he wasn't looking at the street. No, he was looking at the trailer. He was looking through one of the windows. He saw something. He started just glowing with radiant energy and then turned and like went through the already open doors uh, into the Gruff, church. Gruff's, Gruff's going to gallop into the church. That's okay. that's a sprint. Very cool. That is my mentor. All right. Uh, he is in let's, let's see. He is in let's danger. Take, I think something's in danger and he's going to help. Oh, All right. Um. Um, <laughs> uh, it's hell in horse form. We'll do a little like I don't know, like skip of like her her back legs to be like, "Hey, Bella, you ready for this?" Because um, like, like, y'all ready for this? Do, 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 do. All right, let's get some initiative rolls. We'll follow as long as she's holding on. Uh, that thing is fast. Okay, I like that. Oof. Pretty low initiative for me. I got a 15. Okay. I'm going to roll for the... This is a group, I think. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all rolling initiative right now? Yeah, please. Okay, so I have a three. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's with I'm bonuses. rolling really well. Wow. Like, my th- my initiatives were great. I, it was coming. It was coming. Initiatives is, is it's all Spain. That one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Baby. Uh, okay. 17. It's fine. Baby. If I go later, I just have a chance to support the rest of you. 17 exactly. for a debt. Correct. Okay. What about uh what about Bella? Nineteen. Nineteen, yeah. What about uh Gruff? Gruff goes on the same turn as me when I'm mounted. Okay, too easy. Uh da, 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 da. okay. His only action is move, dash, and withdraw. Um the only disadvantage of being mounted is that I cannot split up my move. I can't move, attack, move. Gotcha. Uh, all movement has to happen at once. Does he have like a charge attack or? He can't use his attacks when I'm mounted. He's just part of me, but I get advantage on anything not mounted. <laughs> That's he is happen. helping. <laughs> that is incredibly helpful. Yeah. All right. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on in this, actually. Um, oh, cool. If, if we try to move our little people, um, we are exceptionally close to a trash can icon that comes up. Comes up. <laughs> I'll let you know that. So if we yeah. vanish, I'm sorry. If I vanish, that's why. That's how I feel about you all. <laughs> uh, you gotta watch um, out for the trash cans in the church. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. Grab my character. Oh, there's a trash can. Okay. I'm gonna put you all into the battle mode, and we'll take a quick break and get into this. Uh, where? Let's see. It was a firefight. I guess it's not this. It is this. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, is no, Father Stone on this map? 
Blip. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've added him in, uh, and I will add in a couple of things as we get ready to start. All right. Um, so there is Father Stone, right, kind of rushing down the aisle, right? Uh, so bad news. Um, there is no... I'm going to move you all up a little bit away from the trash can. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is no grid on this map because I couldn't get it centered, so you just have to use the uh, measure tool. Right? Use your measure. Yeah, because the grid wouldn't fit the actual tile pattern, and I was going effing insane, so I just deleted the grid. Uh, so, uh, which I feel is reasonable. So Father Stone is running uh, down that uh way. Now remember that currently still Bella is on Itzel and Odette is on Gruff. Yep. Yes. Yes. Because you have them on opposite sides. Okay. Let me put that there. And I believe I have a Gruff icon. If not, I will by the time we get back from great break. Yeah, you don't really need one while I'm mounted. So. Um, bloop. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's this insanely large uh and i'll blow them up so you can all can see yeah demonic thing it's got pin giant pincer arms coming out of its shoulders and two regular arms coming out of its chest right uh yeah it, that those are those yeah it is super <laughs> demonic looking um yeah. and it, it is approaching nice. the altar uh yeah. of tempest right the, the altar where the the hilt is uh, yes, you know the altar is up on... Oh, no, the hilt is up on this altar in the center, right? Uh, you can't see the cursor, but you, you see the altar right in front of the statue. Um, so it seems to be approaching that area, right? The statue oh, in the center know. is obviously a giant statue of Tempest. The ones off to the sides are other noble warriors um, that are legendary in the temple's history, Right. Obviously, if you look at everything else, there are pews, columns off to the sides, and you see the reflections of stained glass windows from sunlight. Right. So right. that is the thing you see as you uh, rush inside. But let us take a few minutes, and uh, we'll come back to this. All right. Cool. Any questions? All right. We're back in five. Cool.
Yeah, back to live. <clears throat> We're doing it. Immortal combat. Even better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the best kind. You don't have to worry about dying, right? This chair's a little bit lower. Uh, there you go. Good. We are good. Rouge is moving furniture around. <laughs> Alrighty. Back in a second. <laughs> Just come back to tell us you'd be back. Wait. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh this is the the session. This is what we got going on. I should probably take some take some quick notes, huh? Consummate yeah. professionals. I guess. So, can't make me be professional. I refuse. So, just measuring it out, it is 70 feet from us to the altar. Cool. Seems like a good uh, good run. Oh, let's see. It's got a lot of hit points. That's cool. Huh. Don't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's got like more than Oh, yeah. Did I tell you what Gruff's movement speed is? 60, uh, it's right? like 60. Or it's 70 with your aura, yeah? It's 70. Yeah, so uh, that's, yeah, it's one turn. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about this. Let's see. And your aura is how far? <laughs> Five feet. Okay. So, it's almost so we entered next to each other. As long as you start your turn within five feet of me, you get it. And I'm pretty sure Jen goes before me. Uh, oh, this is the wrong order. Um, it is Jen. Jen is first. Bella is first, and then uh, well, Bella. Bella is first of the party members. Technically, Bella is mounted and in mounted combat, which means her and her mount go on the same turn. Cool. Um. If Bella was to charge in and then jump off of her mount, then her mount would go on her mount's turn. So you all come no, inside. No. If Bella right. wants to charge in, though, would be the question. How do Bella charges know? in! Wait, what? <laughs> You're doing what? Bella yes. kicks her heels into the side of her horse, who says, hey, knock it off. <laughs> How do you use the measure tool? Uh, so the measure tool is the little protractor thing. You click on it, and you should be able to drag for distance. Um, yeah, you click two points, and it'll tell you the, what they are. Tell me where yeah. it is. On the um, right side, there's a protractor. Correct. Also, if you press M on your keyboard, it. it'll a fast key. Uh, see, see, now, that, that would have been a lot faster. Yeah. Excellent. So, Excellent. Um, but that's just because I could not get the grid to line up with the grid floor. and That's fine. This tool is handy as hell, and it means yeah. we don't have to align with the grid. So it, Yeah, it is much better. So... You you can come right inside, and Father Stone is already running down the aisleway. His gauntleted hands are just glowing with some sort of radiant light, uh, and he's running after this large demonic entity that has just entered the temple, um, and is heading towards the altar. Also, did we call the triangle a protractor? Seriously? Okay. So, is that <laughs> not a? That's a. That's a no, that's, that's a speed a square. As a woodworker, I can tell you that's a speed square, and I'm not that's paying like attention. That's a square. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah that's, the... that's absolutely a half a protractor. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's that's fine. The, the, ones I get come, the ones I get are square. The protractors are square. It's fine. And you get half a protractor. You know what? <laughs> Roll double initiative. Uh, <laughs> hi, thank you for speaking. I was looking for the pet alert emoji, and I couldn't find it. So, Oh, no. Where is the pet alert emoji? Hi, Peach. Oh, Metalina is tired of our shit now. She has turned her back to us. The dogs are just kicked in the door. And, oh, no, is the pet alert gone? Oh, no. What's happened? We lost the pet alert. Well, stream's over. I'm done. That was fine. Did it get replaced with whatever the new one? That the emotional damage was? one? That's yeah. That's probably it. <laughs> shit, yeah. this chair leans backwards and I don't like it. So There we go. No. <laughs> Father Stone is running down the aisleway. He just yells at this thing like, Hey! You are on... Consecrated? 
I was gonna say sacred. I was say sacred, but yeah. Uh, you are on consecrated ground, and you, your presence here will not be tolerated. Get out. It's true. And this is a church. This would be consecrated. The demon laughs. This goes. I am here for the relic, and I will take the relic. You cannot stop me. Oh. Challenge um, accepted. And sorry, friend. We call dibs. Um, so right now, that probably comes out as like. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of these other little, uh, I say little, I mean like medium humanoid uh, creatures <laughs> pop out of the darkness all around the temple and just start giggling and laughing. Oh, um, cool. Uh, large demon thing goes first. Uh oh. Right. It moves and. Just so you are clear, the sword is sitting on the altar up here. Right? Uh Uh, It moves over here and begins taking its large pincer claws and smashing parts of the statue of Tempest. Mother! Um, And you can see it is doing some very fast damage. It is incredibly strong. Um, Roll some things real quick. Yeah, just start smashing into it. Um, A little bit of light starts to seep out of it. Um, Next thing. Light is seeping out of the statue that's breaking. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, The statue's sword lights up uh, with just radiant fire. Everyone gains 10 temporary hit points. Oh, fun. Uh, as the temple <laughs> itself reacts to the presence of this strange demon. Okay. Bella, you're up. Why mess with something that's not broken? I'm going to Eldritch Blast the demon. You're going to Eldritch Blast? <laughs> <laughs> what a shock! Do it! <laughs> you know what? I've had what? enough of your sass. <laughs> Did you hear what I was saying earlier about mounted combat? Um, of currently, yeah, you I mean, go at the same time until you get off of her. Oh, I'm not getting off unless she asks me to. I'm not getting closer. My range is 120. Why would I get closer? Because she can't take a turn. Um, oh, I'll just mount then. I'm trying to move you on my screen. Bloop. Okay. Bloop, bloop. I'll, say, dis- you can, I'll you use can my ride. move to dismount. You can you can ride somewhere and then dismount if you want. Well, but but she doesn't get to take a turn. You said she's she like would way then lower after, in the order. Yeah, then I would get to after you got off. Yeah. If you get off, she gets to go on her initiative. Yeah. So I'll get off now because otherwise she'll get missed when it's her turn. Cool. Yeah, so you hop off of uh, Itzel. Um, so, obviously, you can see down the pews in front of you, there's, like, some sort of weird, hunched-over, greenish, green-tinted, like, sickening-looking demonic creature with horns uh, about 10 feet away from you and up in the pews, right? And you see a few more scattered around, and then, of course, this large monstrosity. Uh, you're welcome to roll Knowledge Religion, if you'd like to. Of course I would like to roll Knowledge Religion. Why would I turn down that? Even though it hasn't done me well all night. And it's not going to do me well now. That's a nine. Scary demon. Big scary demon. Blast it. <laughs> yep. Um, go ahead and roll. Roll for damage. Or roll, roll to attack. I'm God. Gonna, I'm... Now you've got me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am going to go for the one that's just like closest in the pew. So this one that's sort of like dead ahead of where Bella is on the map. Okay. Rather than go for the actual big, scary, big, scary demon, I'm going to go for the more manageable size demon. Makes sense. So first attack. Yes. Um, that is going to be a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. 
blast this Whoops. thing in the face immediately. Okay, so that is going to then be 11 <clears throat> damage. Okay. I'm assuming that does not take it out. Uh, it's close. It hurts it a lot. Then I'm going to hit it with my second Eldritch Blast. Okay. And that is going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Yes! Uh, and that will only be a seven um, total damage this round. Is that enough? It's not. Uh, you really? blast it twice. It screeches and like flips backwards over the pew. Uh, and you can see it just jumps back up, though, kind of sizzling. Uh, it looks very upset. Did you say these were demons or undead? Uh, these are demons. Did you want to throw hex in there? I'm going to save it until I get closer to the big guy. That's fair. Cool. Okay, Odette, you are up. Great. Um, Little numbers on these dudes. So the, 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 the one within, like, you know, blasting range of uh, Bella is the one that she hit? Yeah, number one, we got blasted pretty good. Number, I can see that now. Okay, yeah, I can zoom in. Great. Um, o- Odette, uh, <laughs> she's like, thank you for the ride. Um, and she hops off. Uh, and uh, how, is it very well lit in here? Or is it? Uh, it is. Patches of darkness. Probably. This guy's symbol of the flaming sword. Yeah, uh, there are some patches of dark of shadow you can get into, like the pillars are casting uh, some shadow because most of the light's coming from the altar itself. Got right. it. So okay, if you're looking right. at like uh, little pools of, of shadow, you can find right. them. You probably won't be able to use my abilities here, so uh, I will go. So that's fifteen. Um, oh, I can't pick her up like that. There we go. So uh, she is going to go here. Uh, 15. <clears throat> yeah, I think actually, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to get all up in this one's business. Um, and Odette uh, just points points at the creature and uh, starts like shadows start kind of shifting around her, her form. Uh, she goes up on point and she points at it and she says, you are mine. And uh, I'm going to hex this creature. Cool. So, okay. Um, it, this lasts for an hour, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it is hexed. I think so. Okay. And if the creature dies on a subsequent turn, a bonus action moves it to another creature. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, this is going to work out perfectly. So, uh, and then Odette um, takes the, uh, uh, the javelin and just kind of like jumps and also spins at the same time uh, into it and uh, tries to uh, kick it as well. So, okay. Important question, whenever you cast Hex, what are you giving it disadvantage on? I'm giving it, well, and it's unfortunately not saves, right? So I'm going to uh, go yeah, for strength. Okay. Um, because strength. All right. Very cool. Strength and dex are really the only things they should be using oh, in combat. It's too yeah. bad. Like, haha, you're hexed. Well, I guess it would be useful. You're like, I want this, this bard to mess up all of his music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do damage to him? No, I don't want him to succeed. Yeah. If you could hex someone spellcasting, that would be way overpowered. That would be super cool. Um, <laughs> overpowered, but pretty damn cool. So 16. Uh, that would be. That is a 26 to hit. Oh, yeah. That hits. Oh, yeah. Great. Uh, Hi. Then I'm rolling this. Plus this, so that is uh, uh, six points of magical piercing, uh, three points of 
necrotic. Very nice. Uh, how's it looking? Uh, it dies. It dies. Nice. Fan- okay. Fantastic. You, um, then- your, uh, your hex literally, like as it's standing on its last leg, the hex actually just bolts it down and it dies. Fantastic. Um, uh, so oh, next, no. Odette, uh, I can't use it. I can't uh, move it with a bonus action this round. It has to be a subsequent turn. Uh, Odette moves up here. Also, casting it was a bonus action, so. True, yeah. yeah true. <laughs> um, and uh, that's, well, that's that's all I can really do. I have this extra attack. Ah, how far away is this guy? You did start within five feet of me, so you have plus ten to your movement. Ooh. Give it one extra a second. That as far as I can take it, so I will go. Ah, switching between things, uh, she's going to be here. Okay, and I am going to look at this because darts are still a thing. Um, and I'm I'm within range enough. Actually, it's just outside range. And so, if, if it's outside the uh, twenty foot range, does that mean I get disadvantage on the attack? Uh, are you throwing something? Yeah, I'm throwing a dart. Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah, you can still hit, but you're outside the normal range of the dart, so you have disadvantage. Uh... All of those look pretty bad. So let's see. The worst one is 15. Actually, it's not too bad. Uh, it connects, but this demon's skin is just like iron. <clears throat> just okay. Uh, and uh, good to know. She, she like snaps her fingers in frustration. Uh, and that's the end of my turn. Okay. Very effective. Alrighty. Father the stone moves up. Uh, runs up the center of this uh, this aisle way. Okay. Uh, his gauntlets light up, and Valen, you've seen him do this before. Uh, he proceeds to just like punch the air. And it just sends a shock wave of radiant, like crescent moon style damage flying towards this uh, demon. Oh, you can um, hear it valid in the background. Oh! Like, it takes the first one full in the face, and then you see it's like uh, pincer arms kind of come up and block the second one, <laughs> just washes off of it. Uh, but it just, you can just, like hear the sizzling of radiant damage as it connects. Um, when one of the attacks connects, there we go. Yeah, good move. Uh, and Father Stone just yells, Be gone or we will force you to leave. <laughs> and his voice just reverberates like through the walls and shakes the temple a little bit. Cool, Valen, you're up. All right. So what Valen's going to do, I looked up the rules to make sure I could do it, but cinematically, <laughs> uh, Valen is, uh, Gruff is going to sprint. So his movement speed is 105. So he goes tear assing down this aisle, leaps over the altar, midair, Valen reaches down and grabs the hilt and then lands and smacks this thing in the face uh, with the flaming sword. I, I forgot to say it. The plant sword is off. <laughs> Hell yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, it looks surprised. <laughs> you do this. Like it's got its, its pierce uh, its piercer arms up like this to block that second radiant blast. It puts its hands down, just sees you flying over the altar, it's like, whoa. <laughs> what size is this thing? You said it's big. I'm assuming it's size large or is it's it size is a large creature. Damn. All right, so I don't have advantage. Um, but I am going to use one of the party's advantage to okay. try to replace this four. Uh, 
You cannot because you were the last one to use advantage. Oh, I can't. Yeah. All right. So well, anybody can pull I... from it any time, but you can't pull from it twice in a row. That's fine. Uh, so the first one misses. <laughs> okay. It would have been cool because it looked neat, but <coughs> second one is a 24 to hit. That'll definitely hit. Okay, I was going to say, it's a boss. It might not. <laughs> oh, it's it's up there, but that 24 hits. All right. Uh, this is five physical magic damage. Okay. Seven fire damage. And then I'm going to blow a level two smite on him. I'm assuming he's a fiend. Oh, yeah. So that is one, two, three, four D eight radiant damage. Nice. That's not like that. One, two, three, four. Wow, these are sad. Two twos, a three, and a four. All right, so that's eleven radiant damage. Okay. It's still good. It's still good. Uh, it connects and it just explodes in this just lens flare of radiant damage, and uh, it does not like that one bit. Um, and you can see like one of the hand, one of the pincer hands like comes up and grabs your like the your sword and tries to like knock it out of the way before it connects to its body. Uh, just like burns all over its arm. Good. Try to interpose myself between him and the statue and be like, not in my house. Uh, yeah, now that you're up here, this weird the statue's leaking some sort of or like radiating some sort of like weird purplish light. Um, purplish. Yeah, that's right. unusual. Yeah. So cool. Uh Valent, anything else for Valent? Uh no, I have in my in my shield hand, I have the hilt. Okay. Very cool. Uh, yeah, they all got plenty of movement. So, yeah. All right, it's so number two. This thing comes running out, uh, out of debt. Um, disadvantage, unfortunately, for it. Um, 19, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, this little thing just like oh shifts right. It becomes it goes from like this weird like almost human sized thing to like a much smaller condensed version of itself and flies through the air, uh, just cackling. Um, <laughs> like this is weird. Like it's just having a time of its life uh, while it's while it's we'll up here it again. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it twice. Uh, <laughs> Only if only if just let it get will he do it again. So right, I don't. I mean, the rest of them will do it when they attack. He's doing uh, it. So, but uh, it does. It latches. What it does? It, what it does is, it, as it shrinks, it latches onto you Ooh. and starts stabbing you with this like little scorpion-like tail that it has. Yeah. Um, How are they? take up taking five piercing damage. Right, uh, as it like I said, shrunk to about like stuffed animal size. It's just like scrambling all over you. Uh, um, it's a gremlin. There, it's kind of. <laughs> uh, do me a favor, make a Constitution saving throw, please. Uh, yes, it, it, uh, got past, it got past the uh, um, the the stole of stars or whatever the displacement. Yeah, I rolled very well on that disadvantage roll. All right, okay. But this is a poison effect, so if you have uh, any advantage against that, uh, a what attack? A uh, poison what? effect. Not really. Um, okay. However, I did I did roll relatively well. Um, uh, that's an eighteen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, you feel the wound start to just burn and sizzle immediately, but there's no additional effects. Ah, get it off me! <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's still clinging onto you, just like scrambling around you. It's uh, it's terrible. Um, number three runs at Father Stone. Um, and latches on. It makes the con save, though. 
Um, so number three just jumped, like also shrink slashes, on, jumps onto Father Stone uh, and starts stabbing him with that scorpion like tail. Uh, and he's just like trying to bat it away with this like male fist that he has, <clears throat> but he can't quite connect to the damn thing. Um, and he would have advantage on poison saves. He would. He's about. Uh, hmm. He was not. He was not poisoned, uh, but he was hurt, which sucks. Would would a shield have avoided that attack? Um, I mean, the X-ray C may have helped, but okay, got it. That's about it. Uh, sh- let's see. Uh, number four is going to Doctor Fallon. I'm in danger. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> let's see. Your AC is pretty high, though, so. <sighs> Miss. Uh, it stabs you. Like, it actually, like, shrinks down, and, like, you feel that scorpion tail just stab into your armor, and, like, it stops about, like, a quarter or, like, an eighth of an inch away from your, like, skin. And it like pushes further in and then realizes it's not making any progress. And then it's like, try, tries to jump back. Uh, I just barely missed you on that one. And then give it a grin. Do a couple come at you. Um, this one will hit, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So yeah, I have, uh, I have resistance to poison damage and okay. advantage on poison saves. Cool. Uh, it's five piercing, and then, yeah, go ahead and roll a constitution for poison, please. A con for poison. All right. Yeah. Uh, con for me is a plus six. You don't have and to I have it. advantage, but that's a 22. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're super fine. <laughs> okay. The second one was a nat one, so thank you, advantage. Oh, shit. Yeah, that would hurt. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. How much yeah. piercing did you say? Five. Okay. Yeah. Comes out of those temporary HP. Yup. Uh, very cool. And then, Edzel, you're up. Oh, wait. Yeah. You said five. Was it poison damage? No, piercing damage. Never mind. Piercing. Yeah. No poison damage taken. Uh, you I'm feel that. Up. Yeah. So, uh, I'm still in wild shape. Yes. And I started the turn within five feet of Valen and Gruff. Yes? Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Just checking. All right. So. Uh, fantastic. I'm going to stay in wild shape right now because I would like to get to, uh, let's do the, uh, yeah, no, I want, I, I don't know what, oh no, they are numbered. Okay, good. Um, let me get to the, the giggling imp thing on Odette. Um, because that's far enough away that I can trampling charge it. Okay. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to like basically like bell bells down next to me. So we're gonna just like like flick my tail a little bit. I'm like, all right, you're on your own now, and uh, do a nice like rear up and make like that nice like you know horse money that I can't do right now because my throat sucks. Um, <laughs> and charge at the one next to Odette. It has to make a strength saving throw, please. Uh, Or be knocked prone. Wolf. Damn. Oh, Oh, no, it's not. Whatever. It's the DC is what? 14. 14? (laughs) Fail. Nice. Okay, delightful. Um, So now I can attack it with my hooves, and it counts as a bonus action. Um, cool. I'm gonna move no, I'm sorry. It, I can attack it, and then prone? the yeah. bonus action is the hooves the second time. So we'll see if it makes both of them. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to attempt to to kick it. Um, well, it's prone, so we're going to attempt to stamp it, you, I guess. You kick it off of Odette's face. So <laughs> Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> Yeah, it screeches, it's laughing, it hits the ground, it squeaks a couple times as it, as it bounces. <laughs> yeah, uh, here we go. Uh, so that's uh, 23, will that hit? Oh yeah, that'll hit. Turn Excellent. Alright, uh, 2d6 two, 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 plus 4. Jumping up and down on it. <laughs> uh, 15 damage. Whew. Still up. Uh, Still it up. is hurt that's though. Okay, I get one more of these as a bonus action now because it's pro. Get um, it. So, yeah. was that in Mulan where the horse was stomping on Eddie Murphy's dragon? I <laughs> just yes. <laughs> yes. 
Okay. That's that the exact is... scene I was picturing in my head. Well, the, the dishonor the on you, family, <laughs> your cow. Uh, that one is only an eight. So the next an eight will not hit. No, 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 not. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, hold on. Roll to hit. <laughs> you gotta hit first. <laughs> oh no, that's not gonna hit it. Sorry, that was that's only a what seven? Yeah, that's not gonna hit it. You can yeah. use one of our three points of advantage. It's true. You can. Sure. Yeah, because then you can use the next one, can I? All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, shoot. Hits, all right. That's not why I would ask. Twenty-four. Hit. <laughs> 24 I'm assuming hits. Oh yeah, twenty-four definitely hits. Great. All right. So then the next one would be eight points of damage. Uh, okay, and that kills it. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, as you literally just like run in, trample, knock this thing off Odette, and then proceed to just smash it into like a green paste on the floor. Um, yep. It is done. Now it so. is surrounded by fiends. It is still like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. You uh, movement action, bonus action. What else do you got? Are you done? Oh, That's yeah. That's it. Char- Char- okay. away. Drop the wild shape next time. Cool. Uh, let's see. I mean, you could drop the wild shape, but why would you? Uh, it's so effective. I would like to be in starry form. Uh, yeah, that's fair. fair. Um, oh, it's, so you can also make a religion check if you wanted to for the thing. Sure. Uh, Odette as well. I mean, you all can. But... It player me has a suspicion, but... Uh, for what the creature is or what the glow is? What the creature oh. is. Hmm. Um, 19. What do you think it is, player-wise? The the creature creature or the little ones? Yeah, the big one. Oh, I don't know. Okay. What do you think the little ones are? Imps. Uh, close enough. You recognize them to be closets, which okay. are, yeah, okay. like little yeah. Yeah. monstrosities that do the bidding of stronger demons. That makes sense. Um, yes. On a 19, the demon you see here is called a Galbrezu. Um, mm. They are... Oh, those are, those are uh, large and scary. Yeah, they are smart demons that are actually in charge of things and given usually very important tasks, right? That is scary. Um, they also love to make Faustian bargains with people. Mm. Like, that is their, their crack cocaine. Like, that's their anti-drug. I shouldn't... That doesn't make any sense. Um, what, what's it called again? Uh, Galbrezu. I thought it was a Galbrezu. Yeah, it's a so, G- GLA. 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 Yeah. yeah. I like Gal Razor. That's what I wrote. Close enough. I got a fifth I got a fifteen, but I'm more curious about that purple glow coming out of my god statue. Uh that is blowing your mind because um it radiates as fiendish. <laughs> um but is he trying to desecrate my consecrate? Uh you are not sure what that is and w- why it's in the statue but it does radiate fiendish energy and it is of course getting stronger as it is damaged i did want to ask does the temple count as consecrated ground so yes because this is this is the thing uh welcome to nerds arguing on the internet uh the dm (laughs) manual does not say what consecrated ground does it does say that on desecrated ground demons get advantage on saves so mm-hmm. you could posit that on consecrated ground, demons should get disadvantage on saves. What I have done is given the temple a lair action um, okay. to compensate for that. That's why you all got temp hit points and stuff. Mm. So it has one every round. Okay. Uh, okay. That is how we're, I'm balancing that. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> you could call that. I'm, I'm curious what other actions it has. This is cool. Oh, it's got a D4 of them. So um, Nice. Yeah. So, uh, the Glau- Galbrezu, uh, Glau- whatever. Glabrezu. So, Galbrezer. Galbrezer. The Gal guitar. <laughs> yes. Galbrezer. Um, I'm Gal. <laughs> I'm Gal. Um, it's. <laughs> I guess, I guess all the bits together for face. It's the gal razor. I guess it'd actually be like that. <laughs> How do y'all? Um, I'm gal razor, but you can call me sharp. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it takes two actions and attacks this statue, right? Really? With um, me right here in its face. Oof. Yeah, it's two smaller arms just smash into it. 
uh, still Ooh. causing more damage, and that more cracks of that weird purple light come through. How uh, much do damage? Because I have my interception reaction to, de- to reduce it by a d10. Would you like to use that? Uh, yes, I can do it every okay. turn. <laughs> cool. Uh, I the amount of damage by two. The amount of damage is. I'm gonna roll. Let's see. Just, uh, make sure I get all this out there. Because I was taking the average, but this is important. Um, this is not going to go in my favor if you're taking the average, probably. But uh, uh, it does 32 damage. Minus two. That's 30 damage. <laughs> <laughs> what was the average? <laughs> Uh, the average is... what a gal. Uh, the average is 12. Per hit. How many times did it hit it? Just twice. So instead of 24, it did 30. Yeah. Awesome. You helped. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um... It turns around with the large pincer arms. No regrets. <laughs> um, and uses those to attack you, Valen. Bring it, old man. Has a lot of attacks. Um, the first one is going to come at you. Uh, yeah, 24 hits. Um... And that does 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Right? Uh, as it just starts bashing you with this massive pincered arm. Uh, the second attack is going to go after your sword. Really? Is it a disarm uh, attack? Uh, no, it is a sunder attempt. Oh. He's trying to break the sword. Yeah. Your flaming longsword? Cool. Um, Can you intercept your own sword? Once per turn. And I can't intercept my own attacks. Uh, Do me a favor and make a opposed grapple as this thing latches a pincer or attempts to latch a pincer onto your sword. Uh, It is... That's a strength uh, check? Yes, that's a strength check. Not athletics. Correct. Right? Uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is athletics. Um, it is athletics. Okay. Yes, yeah. it's 19 right now. Do it. You can do it. That's a 22. Okay. Yeah, you can. Uh, it tries to latch onto your sword, and you can see it is strong enough to clearly do damage to something like that, even though it is magical. But you managed to rip the sword out of its pincers before uh, it is able to do anything to it. Stop it! Um... <laughs> That was scary. <laughs> roll a percentile die as one more thing happens. Okay, cool. No, we don't D4, like it. D4 for the temple. All right, uh, the statue again glows with radiant light, and this time everyone's going to gain plus one AC for the round. Ooh. Uh, do we so, lose the previous? You, uh, the head temp hit points are still there. Okay. Good. So since well, you not, for some of you, <laughs> unless you have used them, but they're still there. Um, very cool. Some of Bella. us are still untouched at the back. We can fix that, Bella. It's fine. I have one job on this team, and it's to get everybody to hit me. <laughs> and I'm currently doing my job well. Um, in my part. Yeah. So I'm gonna say Bella moves like up here by the pillar. Okay. And then proceeds to take an Eldritch Blast at the one attacking Father Stone. Cool. Actually, no. You know what? Odette and Itzel are close enough. They can... No, they've got this. I will actually fire at the one number five all the way up there by Valen. Okay. Totally okay with this. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let me... And that will be a 21 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. 
for 11 damage. Okay. Still up. It blasts into it. It screeches that weird hyena bat screech. Okay. I'm going to follow it up with another one. Does a um, 17 hit? 17 does hit. And that is going to be six damage. Uh, Okay. It is blown off of Father Stone. Kind of hits the floor, right? And just screeches. Oh, no, I was attacking five. I'm sorry, number five, yeah. Blown backwards off of Vala and kind of hits the floor, screeches and giggles a little bit. Um, But it's still up. If you... Not to metagame, if you would not mind hexing the big motherfucker. I was actually just going to be like, you know what? We're, we've are we gotten closer. This is looking looking kind of dicey. Let's go ahead and hex uh, Gal Razor. Um, okay. And we will say strength, strength. is its ability that's going to get specifically weakened. That's what it, it just tried to break my sword. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure this is great. I'm very uncomfortable with this. <laughs> I mean, I do have my my holy avenger hilt, but it's surprisingly unhelpful without the rest of it. Right. <laughs> you need to just toss it. Okay. See what that happens. Move. A jet. Cause some damage. Um, great. Um, Odette. Uh, uh, how does the one on uh, Father Stone look? Uh, untouched. Untouched. Mm. Uh, and how bad does uh, Gal Razor look? <laughs> uh, it's hurt. It's got some singe marks on its arms. Um, but the way it is pummeling that statue, like, doesn't seem to. It's not slowing it down. Uh, I see that last bit. It's not slowing down from. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's continuing to cause damage to the statue. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot of fight left in them. Yeah. Um, uh, o- Odette uh, w- looks at everybody else and she's like, I'm going to go help him. I'm afraid of what might happen if this statue goes down and uh, we'll just lights off. So I'm going to measure... And yes, I can make that in one round. Uh, does Father Stone have the same aura? Uh, it doesn't matter. He's no. too far away from me, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, he he have Paladin aura, but you're just going to pass through it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 10 feet away from him. Yeah. Actually, based on uh, Father Stone's build, he is not... I'll get into it later, but he, he is not a Paladin. Okay. Oh, All right. okay. Yeah. Um, he's built differently. She, she's he moving built over here, and then uh, she just... Like a uh, sprinting runner, like a, like a, an Olympian, just like clears all of these uh, different um, cues. Um, however, I have to put myself here. Unfortunately, that's as far as I can go. Okay, um, that's fine. As you clear the p- pews, please throw me an athletics check. Uh, may I roll acrobatics? I'm good with it. Yes. You just like yes, I succeed. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm just, basically, I, I declare believe. success. <laughs> I assume it's like an eighteen or some shit. Uh, like well, rolling nineteen, I have a plus nine. I yeah, fine. You know. Okay, so yeah, you just flip through these pews, uh, pews without a problem. Land next to right. uh, the giant. Demon. Um, uh, jumping over the last pew, uh, she she says you, and uh, I'm also going to hex this bad boy. Um, okay. And uh, I'm going to. Well, I guess hexing uh, strength would be redundant, wouldn't it? Yeah, hit dex, I guess. De- dex. So dexterity. Strength and dex. So okay. we can't replace athletics with acrobatics. Rude. Co- correct. So, uh, and I think Odette is also going to. If I can do this at the same. No, I cannot, but that's okay. Uh, Odette is going to uh, attack with. 
I'm just trying to get clear things. Um, uh, she's going totally to accurate. attack with the javelin of lightning. Okay. Uh, that is that's a twenty. <coughs> uh, you going for uh, Gal Razor? Uh, I am going for Gal Razor. Okay, yeah, that'll hit. Uh, that is full. That's a six uh, plus five. That is eleven points of magical piercing. Okay. Um, and uh, four points of necrotic. Ready. She is going to follow up with a uh, kick. Mm, not so. Not so good. Um, does a 12 hit? No. No dice. Uh, and that would One be... of the little arms just, like, catches your legs and pushes you back. <laughs> she... Retreat. Uh, um, uh, shudders at that. Uh, and that is it for me. Cool. The chat would like to say that Gra- Gal Razor's minions are her gal pals. Gal pals! Gal pals! That's <laughs> very good. <laughs> Happy all these my gal pals. Gal pals. Wow. That's the one. Wow, pals. Pals. You can call them sharp. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically spelled with the weird L. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, or, or she just goes, want to make a deal? Uh, because cow skin and stuff. I, I named that thing, but now I'm about to have Father Stone attack it. So it's yeah, no, attack. that's fair. Um, let's see. Jesus Christ, all three of those hit. Um, it's fine. He got Father Stone got this. Uh, Father Stone, uh, when he connects, does a lot of damage. He's just he's the main character in Arcane. Like that's those are the gauntlets he's got right there. Yeah, he proceeds to literally just like fly up into the air. Uh, and just come down with some sort of like meteor swarm arc, just hits the ground, explodes as it flies up into the air, he uppercuts it again, and then like just punches a beam of light to the third attack into oh, you it. You were going into the um, oh, not anymore. And just <laughs> proceeds to, oh no! Like the little shocked face on it. It's just like, oh, what happened? And it dies. <laughs> uh, as it just is exploded in like a flurry of radiant damage. Um, and then he turns and. Oh, wrong button. Oh, God. Clanks his way <laughs> this way. I would like to point out that Father Stone is the one who taught me how to smite, and I would like you all to ignore the fact that t- Father Stone is the one who taught me how to do religion checks. <laughs> <laughs> Focus on the strengths, right? Um, cool. He runs up nice and close. Valen. It's it me again? All right, I was going to throw down one of my spells, but actually what I'm going to do is use a bonus action to activate my peerless athlete so that for the next 10 minutes I have advantage on athletics checks. Cool. And then I'm going to backhand number five. Right on. (laughs) Backhand number five. (laughs) That's a 17 to hit. That will hit. All right. Is this one Sandra Arita? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just millennial things. <laughs> it's me. Recovering from COVID, don't mind me. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I think everybody gets right. inspiration from that one. <laughs> <laughs> Backhand number five. <laughs> wow, All right. Well, well done, Vicky. <laughs> oh, God, you killed him! <laughs> You're not going to make it. That is ten physical magical damage. Okay. Uh, Nine fire damage. Mm-hmm. Did he die? It is dead. Okay. <laughs> it just explodes. It's the one that uh, Bella Eldritch blast. So like it was on its last leg anyway, and it's kind of like started to scramble up the statue and start tearing pieces out of it. 
uh, you just connect and explodes it. It explodes. You see, Valen just stabs it and is looking at it like he's about to smite, and then it's dead. He says, fuck it, pulls the sword out. It just goes, Aah! and pops away. And then I'm going after uh, a Miss Gal. Alrighty. Miss Gal, if you're nasty. Miss Gal. Ooh, that's, there we go. That's a 24 to hit. That will hit. All right. Huh. That, uh, oof. Excuse me. That is six physical magical damage. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Six magical slashing damage. Uh-huh. Got it. Got it. Uh, seven fire damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to blow another level two smite on that ass. Cool. Get it. Which is another 4d8 radiant. Because this is my house. Six, eight, fifteen, twenty-two radiant damage. Good hit. All right. Significantly better than the first one. Yeah, that one. That one rocked it. Uh, You're inspired by that, so. Yeah. You. Yeah, it takes. It takes that hit. Uh, and again, like the same thing, the hands go to kind of protect itself. Uh, and there's just sizz- like singe marks all over its shoulders now. Uh, and some on its face. Right. Uh, as it looks just angry. Very well done. Uh, I'm going to roll some dice. The chat no. believes all of our jokes are an AOE attack. <laughs> Quality. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, number four is going to turn around, um, shitter a little bit, and then Gal's going to point at Valen, and it's just going to jump at Valen. <laughs> um, Bring it, you little gremlin. Oh, you're so lucky. Um <laughs> <laughs> It does hit. It is not a crit. Um, Adamantine armor, baby. Immune to crits. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, then that doesn't, wouldn't have mattered. Uh, but yeah, you just take five piercing. Five uh, piercing. Give, okay. Give me a constitution saving throw, please. Is this a poison? It is. All right. Oh, uh, that is 21. No, con, 20. Okay. Uh, yeah, you are not affected by the poison. Oh, good. Cool. Um, and it is actually going to... Uh, no, I can't. Okay, so it will actually just stay there. Uh, okay. I grinned at it last time. I'm going to spit it on it this time. <laughs> it's L. You're up. Excellent. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to drop the uh, illusion that I am a horse. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to be a horse anymore. Um, we're going to switch to starry form, the archer. Um, so we're going to switch from one form to the other. So I <laughs> melt out of this horse form into, you know, humanoid shape of void and starlight and... Um, and we're going to, uh, go ahead and shoot a guiding bolt at Galrazor over there. Okay. Um, and we're going to do that at the... <laughs> star horse. Can, can you be a star horse for me? It's a star horse. <laughs> I'd ride that horse. That's awesome. Um... Let's go ahead and do guiding bolts <clears throat> at the. Screw it. We'll do the third third level. Um, Ooh. All right. Uh, yeah. All right, and I'm totally within range. Okay, good. Um, so let's. How did our uh, advantage go from three to one? I know it's a used one. Uh. Two have been used this session. I used one earlier. Oh, maybe you just forgot to reduce the counter. That's possible. Okay. 
Okay, does 14 hit him? It does not. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, all right, Guiding Bolt doesn't doesn't hit, but I'm in Archer form, so the uh, Starry form with um, has the range attack of a Luminous Arrow. All right, so that one. For specific flavor, it cra- the uh, Guiding Bolt would have crashed into him and like reflected off of his uh, demonic skin. Uh, great. So does 17 hit? Uh, same thing. It reflects off. His okay. AC is a little higher than that. So Guiding Bolt and the Luminous Arrow, both. Oof. Yeah. So guiding, guiding Bolt would have been useful, too. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, and that, that's it then. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do. All right. So we're a little over time, but something else is about to happen, right? So the question is do we want to stop soon or are people good to go a little longer? I'm good to go. I kind of need to stop soon. That's fair. Okay. There it is. Fair. Cool. Not a problem. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at the end of this round, which was, well, that, right? Um, I'm going to stop at the end of the... Huh. I'm going to stop at the end of this next round. Does that work for people? Sure. sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Um, there is a crashing noise that you hear. But I don't like that. <laughs> I take it back. You're not allowed to go this round. <laughs> Sorry? Did I say I'm good to go for a little bit longer? I meant right now we need to stop. And whatever notes you were taking, just pretend they didn't. Gotcha. My bad. I, I misunderstood you. Yeah. Um, like right now. Emergency. There's a crashing noise that you hear Ooh. as oh, another... Shit large monstrosity smashes through one of the stained glass windows. It's frog um, demon. It looks like one of the crazy frog demons you saw earlier, right? Uh, with just this, there we go, a little central, right? Yeah. Just spikes in anger and rage everywhere. Um, and it turns uh, and looks at Gal Razor uh, and gives it like a weird demonic acknowledgement of some type and Galrazor just points towards Bella and Itzel. Um, I'm rolling a shit for this thing. Now would be a good time to remind you that I have verbal in a canteen that is not sealed. Yeah. <laughs> we have found that verbal is frogbane. That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, that we is have a burble right and we're not afraid to use it. <laughs> I have an army. We have, we have a burble. We have a burble. Yeah. Guess what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to gargle a frog yeah. demon? Um, it... You know what that is? Hezru. It's a bad Hezru. Like, Hezru. Yep. Yes. Um, <laughs> the... Hezru for you. Uh, Gal Razor's going to take its turn, right? Um, or is it, it? I think it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. That's fun. Uh, so it turns and punches the statue two more times. No, 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 All no. Right. no. I'm going right. to block 1d10 of it. Okay, I'll roll damage. Whether, whether this helps or not, it's very in character. Okay. Now this is good. Uh, this is... Uh, nine, nine, eighteen plus five, twenty-three. Minus two. And it bounced. Uh, it's rotated around the ten and then fell. It's so is, twenty-one. Is it possible to use the inspiration we have to re-roll that blocking damage. Uh, it is. I will tell you. However, the volume of damage. It may not. Mm. That's fair. I reduced yeah. it from 24 average to 21, so this time I actually helped. It has done a significant amount of damage to this statue. Um, 
And at this point, like the cracks start to shine through with that strange purple light. Um, like you said, like I said, Valen, it is demonic in nature. Uh, and the uh, uh, Galbrazu reaches inside of the statue um, and rips out what looks like a lantern dripping with just rot. Like strange, um, like disintegration or a decay is coming off of this like blackened lantern, this emanating this purple light. Um, you don't like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then looks at the three of you and its eyes light up with these insane Looney Tune circles um, as they just bulge out. And it just scre- It just says to you, lose your minds. <laughs> um, and I'd like all of you to make a... Yeah, two, 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 two. Yep, cool. Uh, DC 16 intelligence saving throw, please. Everybody. Is that right? Hold on. Uh, is it intelligence? In, t- in save is rare. Oh, I'm sorry. It is a wisdom saving throw. That's better. Still, okay. even better. So, Yay. Uh, it, is, it is for Odette, Father Stone, and Valen. Okay. Oh, never mind. Who all get my plus three. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank heavens. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I rolled. Okay. okay. Um, that's a 19. Uh, uh, that's good. 15. 15. Oh. Okay. Can what was the uh, target of this? DC 16. Can I'm going to use that last point of advantage. I'm, I'm going to use it. Do you want to do it? Okay. Please do it. 22. Okay. Yeah. I have a plus you. seven to wisdom save. Like The odds of me failing that are, are I have a plus less two. than half. <laughs> All right. Uh, you are not affected by the confusion spell that it cast on everybody. Um, that would have sucked. That would have yeah. sucked for... Everybody, as it as you feel like your mental faculties just being scrambled uh, by this insane thing, and you manage to hold on and not uh, go crazy, but yeah, it is now holding this like lantern that is just dripping decay out of it. Um, so that's kind of cool. Has the temple seemed to suffer because of the uh, the destruction of the statue? Uh, the temple is. Do still I feel like, Tempest's strength wane? Uh, a little bit, but it is still there. Um, oh, speaking of, everyone is now blessed for the round. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that is plus 1d4 on attacks and saves. Correct. As the statue, again, just radiates out more light. Um, that surrounds all of you. The plus 1 AC is gone. Okay. I forgot it was there. Yeah. Um, that's factoring it in. Cool. Uh Bella. Um, There's a frog demon looking at you. I think it's frog demon's turn to get a little bit of the blasty bust. So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eldritch blast that guy. Get it. Uh, don't you roll? Ugh gonna be a 17 to hit that will hit cool. oh, nice Yay. um yeah um and then it's gonna be seven total damage for that one okay i'm gonna hit him with my second blast or at least and that's also gonna be a 17 to hit and damage it's going to be ugh seven again okay uh yeah you lay into this thing and it just is upset <laughs> right uh it doesn't have any responses like the the uh, galbrezu it just screeches at you and that weird gurgling chalk nails down a chalkboard kind of noise um can i have hex on two different Creatures at you, one time? You cannot. No, because it's concentration. Okay. 
You could drop the first one and cast on this guy. You can also move it, I think, as a bonus action. Only if it dies. Uh, yeah, you, if it drops to zero, drop points, and recast. I can. But I would have to. Yeah. Um, right. No, because like, well, so I'm the only one who does extra damage to it while it's hexed, right? Correct. The only reason to leave it is that it's 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 his strength is just lower. Just it's disadvantage on strength checks, but I currently have advantage on strength checks. So if you want to move it, I won't cry. Uh, this motherfucker's looking right at you. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just doing some measurements for planning. Oh. Why do you do this? <laughs> what sick enjoyment are you getting? <laughs> He's measuring if he can get an AOE <laughs> to hit both of you. <laughs> I'm just here. Run this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'll 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 roll them bones and move my hex to um, frog dude. Okay. So this dude no longer has minus on strength, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now Hezru has the minus on strength. Cool. Seemed good. Okay. How far away? Very cool. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Okay. No, that's. Uh, You're going to catch what, your second move closer. Class? I did. You hit. You used both. Yeah, I, I did. Oh, you should usually use hex before you do that. Huh? Yeah, that's um, all good. Actually, I hadn't decided to hex before. Yeah, that's if fair. You're planning I, on moving. I am not. Why would I get closer? I'm not saying get closer. You might want to get farther from Insel. Or further away from Galrazor. Also possible, yeah. You know what? Sure. Now that we've got this to contend with, I will just move back to. Because you're you're closer to Galrazor than you are to the Hezru, right? Uh, about the same. Equidistant, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about the same. We'll just go. Mm-hmm. Boop. Yeah, yeah that's just like no, no that's way out. You Fuck that. Fuck that. Range of 120. I definitely oh, yeah, I can reach anywhere in this temple yeah. with my Eldritch Blast. I don't I need to be near anybody. Get so your ass in that corner. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I have to roll this stupid thing. Do you have you... to? Well, it's, what happens is the Hezra goes next, and it just barrels through uh, these... Is that Pews? the the pew. All those benches. Oh, there is um something like a, a is emergency. Beeping? There's an emergency vehicle at my building. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah. So there's is... definitely something coming from the parking. Like, so what I think it actually is is they they've been resurfacing the street in front of my building for like a month now. Gotcha. And I they always do it at night when you know people might want to sleep. Uh, yeah, so terrible. this is what I get to fall asleep to most nights. Yeah. Okay. I would throw things at that. Um, <laughs> so this thing is gonna. It doesn't go over the pews. No, it doesn't go around them. It just goes through them, uh, because that's how it rolls. But after roll, because it has has a disadvantage on strength now. Why did it roll on its ass? Uh, <laughs> no, the disadvantage was a sixteen. So. It, that was an okay roll, but I was waiting for it to just fucking eat shit. Um, sorry. Well, but remember, yeah. remember, uh, her AC is actually sixteen right now because of the bonus from the layer effect that happened no, last no round. I'm oh, no. sorry, that was that was just to move. Away. That was to move over the. Pews. Did it because the temporary hit points didn't go away? Correct, yeah, but the plus one AC does. Oh. Um, but no, it just like smashes through the pews and comes after itself, right? Um, why is our counter at negative one? That is a good question. (laughs) What buttons are you hitting that you're not supposed to be hitting? I'm pressing all sorts of buttons. (laughs) You actually owe me now. (laughs) 
<laughs> I can just give you disadvantage. That's what that this means. This is this is his way of um, getting more donations. Is that he just keeps putting us in debt to him, and we have to pay to get out of debt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this thing runs and just attacks. It's a, like a freight train. Like the wood from the pews just splinters everywhere. You know, it just stomps through, like literally leaving like cracks in the temple flooring, um, and just attacks. Uh, okay, one misses. Very cool. Um, uh, first one is eight bludgeoning damage. Uh, well, so I'm going to set off a shield from my staff of defense then. Nice. Okay. Uh oh, what's that bring your AC up to? Twenty. Five, I believe, right? Twenty. Okay, only one hits. That one misses. Cool. Yeah, plus five. So be- um the other attack is So you know what the first one? You take thirteen bludgeoning. Um as the last attack hits, the first two miss. Nice. So um as like I said, this freight train monstrosity just comes in smashing. Yeah. Right. So like I lift up the obsidian staff and it just like flares with starlight for a second. And yeah. Very nice. Um, Father Stone. Oh. Mister Stone. Uh oh shit. Okay, that's a D ten. Why had you in there? <laughs> Sorry about that. Sheet! Cool. Uh, He just unleashes uh, a, well, flurry of blows of some type. Right? I guess I've been clearing. Um, It just starts punching into him with these, like, radiant engulfed gauntlets. Uh, And it is doing decent damage. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, and just pummels this thing, right? It's definitely still standing, but uh, by the time it, like, lowers its forearms, it's just, like, sizzling. You can see, like, uh, actual, like, fist marks in its body um, from the flurry. Valen. All right. This motherfucker just broke the statue of my god... And pulled a drippy lantern out. <laughs> that is a 25 to hit. Yep. Oh, nope, that's a D10. Sorry, wrong button. That is seven physical magical damage. Okay, good hit. Eight ma- fire damage. And then I'm about to drop a level two... My last level two smite on him. Woo! Get it. Four D eight radiant. That is eight. Ten. Fourteen. Twenty-one radiant damage. Good God. For the first attack. Whew. Uh he looks hurt. Oh, he's not down yet. No. But uh, that that one rocked his world. Fuck. All right. So I stab him, and I get a glowy explosion. I draw the sword back, thrust it up in the air, cast Thunderous Smite on it, and then hit him again. Heck yeah, do it. That is an 18 to hit. 18 will not hit. Motherfucker. Um... Uh. Uh, it this, again that like first attack comes in and that second smite and he just grabs your weapon by the pincer and starts uh, trying to again crush it and you have to pull it back before he can snap it completely. Was um, I the last one to use advantage? Uh, there is no more. Yeah, I no. Uh, I will donate one. money to get advantage <laughs> for my attack. Don't think I won't. Um, you were also the last one to use it. Yeah, uh, you were unfortunately. Uh, so. How, how do we? How do we? As players, we can we can use the points, the drugs, right, to do a thing. 
Uh, yes, you can give guidance, which is a D4. What is that? Uh, this is just to redeem the drug guidance. 2,000. Would that work for this? Yeah. I I mean, you're, oh, sorry, you are blessed as well. Oh, shit, I forgot. I get, I'm blessed. Yeah. So add that D4, because, uh, you could hit with that. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. How do I do that? That makes it an even 20 to hit. That will hit. So that, yes, Tempest's you know, guidance helps me. You can save your points, so the guidance helps, or the bless helps. <laughs> okay, roll that damage. Is, that is another nine physical magic. Oof! All right, another nine fire damage. Wow! And then my last level. I'm sorry, not yes, my last. Level one smite for three D eight radiant. Eight. Uh huh. Nine. Fourteen radiant damage. Fourteen. All right. Jeez. Um, it is staggered looking at this point. Sorry, it's under drugs. There's an option for uh, two thousand, like all the blasting and the emotional damage and phrasing at the very bottom right. We'll give guidance if you, if you want to redeem that, but you don't have to because he uh, had bless. Yeah. Um, but he's not dead. Wow. I wanted a cool death scene. It is. I'll do this one by numbers because it is it is razor thin at this point. Um, okay. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I said I cast Thunderous Smite on my sword, and I forgot to roll that. You did. Um, holy cow. That actually. Let's take a look at the uh, resistance. That is 2d6 thunder damage. Ooh, buddy. Okay, okay. Which is seven thunder damage, because, of course, the way I roll is a one and a six. Ah, still up. Motherfucker. Um, okay, if I hit it, I have a whole bunch of radiant damage. But that's what I wanted to go do a cool I death know, line. It's my <laughs> church, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. He now has to make a strength save uh, or be knocked backwards. Oh, okay. What's the DC on that? It's not much. Uh, 14. Uh, ah, I might have failed. <laughs> uh, I think I failed. Uh, yep, I missed it. Yay. 10 feet. Okay. But I... Uh, so. just back? Just knocked backwards. No, oh, all right. <laughs> so... Yeah, he didn't bounce off anybody because I'm on the side. Yeah. Kind of like knocks over one of the statues. Um, this dude is going to move here, right? Ugh. Turns around, mm-hmm. grabs the lantern. Like the Galrazer just hands it off to the little thing and grunts something in that strange guttural language. And this thing here cackles and disappears. With the <gasps> lantern with it? Yes. Oh, I was going to attack the lantern, but he was on the ropes. Me too. Um, <laughs> I was just waiting. I was like, I have a bunch of attacks I can throw. Uh, it's L. You're up. Great. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad right now. Okay. Uh, so yeah. We're going to do two things. Um... We're going to throw a, uh, well, we're going to move back first. <laughs> so I'm going to move, uh, give me my, give me my, um, we're going to, we're going to go like here. Um, Keep in mind, if you step back, it will get a chance to attack. Ow, motherfucker, fine. Um, Your call, I just don't want to gotcha. No, I, I, well, I know, I just, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, fantastic. So we're gonna throw my last uh, third level guiding bolt at the. Um, let's go ahead and do that then at the uh, the one right in front of me. Okay. You have bless on that. Good. Uh, da, 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 da. Cool. 
And then, where is my thing? So, 19. That will hit. Great. Okay. And one a third level. So that's going to be 5d6 of... <clears throat> okay. That was not fantastic, but 13 radiant damage to the uh, Hezru. Okay. All right. And then because I'm in archer form, we're going to send that luminous arrow, like, like almost like pull it out of like an uh, invisible quiver off of my back and like shoot it, um, like, uh, like send my arm out and shoot it at the uh, gal razor up in the front. Okay. Ooh. Huh. All right. That's not going to hit him though. Um, Cause even with. Yeah. Bless. Yeah, that's still only a 13. That is not enough. Yep. So Arrow goes zoom, like, he moved backwards. I didn't aim for where he was before, so that luminous arrow just goes. Uh, okay. That's it. That's all I can do. Ah, oh, jeez. I think what I'm going to do is... Um, it's going to move because there are things happening. So, um, Valen, what's your reach? It is a uh, standard. It's nothing fancy. It's only father stone who has attack of opportunity. If he moves, uh, Odette would as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's close enough. Um, it's going to move. It's going to head for the window. Odette, are you muted? Odette, are you muted? Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Oh, wait. Can um, I move the turn? Or. Did I skip yeah, you does, somehow? Does Odette get to go before Gal? Yeah, I feel like Odette goes before me. I, oh. I, feel, I feel like I missed it is, something. It is possible I, I uh, skipped you. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, I was like, didn't Odette roll better than I did on an issue? So. I got a 17. What yeah, you I think... Definitely better than I did. Yeah, I, I skipped you by accident, but I added the uh, Hezru. That was my fault. So go ahead and uh, roll to attack. You're going to take that from him? You're going to take that right now? I wanted, I wanted to take the lantern. That's fine. Um, uh, I'm going to... Uh, Odette, more kind of like a, a kind of like weird, wispy uh, shadows come up over her and... Um, she uses her other hand and she's like, and you are mine now. Um, uh, so we have we have uh, the hex curse on and I also have the hex blade curse on him now. Okay. So Very double nice. curse all the time. Um, plus 1d4 for bless. Yeah. Correct. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. <laughs> 24 will hit. Okay. And that is one, of course, one, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, uh, that's 15 points of damage. Okay. Uh, that is what magical. This, has... this is, this is, um, a magical sphere of yep. electric stuff. Okay. Gee, oh man. Is it lightning or thunder? It, it's a lightning. It's lightning. Okay. Um, okay. Very frightening. Uh-huh. 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. <laughs> 25, 25 also 20, hits. Making sure it hits. Oh, geez. Uh, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 points of magical... We can't read that. Thirteen. Oh. <laughs> um. So Odette. Well um. She's like the lantern, and it vanishes, and she like just does like a, a spin with the uh, uh, with the javelin pointing inward. So she just spins once, like clips it, and then stops and just takes both hands and pushes him. Uh, and like this shadowy explosion kind of happens, 
Awesome. Um, Very nice. And then she nice. lines up again and is like, yeah, it just and it drops uh, as it's as it starts to just kind of disintegrate. Um, and it's because its body starts to just fall apart from this attack. Um, it looks at all of you and says in common. You can't stop him. Whom? Watch us. We didn't even unleash the burble. Like, come on. <laughs> and looks directly at you, Valen, and goes, I'll see you again. And just fades away. Uh, before before it can die. I'm sorry. It's just, this, is, <laughs> this is literally the holy line of my church. I'm mm-hmm. going to grab him by the chin and say, Tempest, thanks you, and throw his ass on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was ass on the... I was just about to be like, oh, oh, Odette, <laughs> clear as a line for you, and like, like you as if like it is be our guest. I love the idea that like he says that line of "I'll I'll see you again," right? And then you grab him and hurl him through the floor, and we just see like the the camera just go one eighty, and he's thrown down back into the abyss and just <laughs> lands <laughs> down there. Um, and just like looks up with like just, yeah, just like with with scorch marks, uh, from where you grabbed him with your like radiant gauntlet on his face, and he's just like, did did you ever play uh, Shadows of Mordor? I did. Yeah, where they had the vendetta system, where if you kill a motherfucker, he can possibly come back with later with scars based on how you killed him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This that, motherfucker's that, got a gauntlet-shaped scar on his face now. <laughs> I'm sure that won't be relevant. Jeez, um, uh, well, in that case, heck, the Hezru uh, looks at this, looks around, look around and look around. bolts. Go ahead, Edsel, you can attack. Excellent. Uh, fantastic. Let's send that. Get it! Uh, I can't do a level three anymore, but I can do a level two guide bolt. Um, let's do. <coughs> Technically, you cannot <coughs> opportunity attack with magic. Out, oh, fine. Then we're just gonna fucking hit it with shoulder. There, there is a feat yeah. for that, um, though. Yeah, you have to take combat. Yeah, that's, that's the good shit. Good. That's the yeah. good shit. But you can swing at it. Yep. Still blessed. Still Thank blessed. You. Plus four or one d four. And no, it's plus four. I swear. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was actually mistaken. It's plus four. <laughs> Also, I didn't move, but that's okay. So I'll <laughs> move. Later. Yeah, how many attacks do you get? I well, it's. I'm just gonna. I'll I'll, I'll move her when it's all done. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, what is that? Twenty four. Yeah, it hits. Great. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Nine. Okay. Uh, what do you attack? What do you attack with? The staff. Okay. Uh, yeah, you smash it in the leg as it is like heading back, uh, and you see kind of limp, uh, hop over these these pews, and then just jump back out the window that it came in. Yes. I I, I don't want to be uh, that guy. May I use my move to get close to that guy before he moves? <laughs> You want to try? He did, he did not move on his turn. I did not get to move on my go, turn. Go ahead and throw an attack. Stuff go ahead um, and throw an attack. Um, I will throw that. I'll tell you, you probably uh, won't be able to it. drop it, but uh, it's okay. Does a fifteen hit? Uh, yes. Really? Mm-hmm. It's going to be fine. Uh, seven points of damage of yeah. uh, magical weapon damage. Yeah, it definitely takes that damage uh, and still just snarls at you as it hops out that window uh, okay. and runs. So that actually, uh, all right, well done. So <laughs> I'm so angry. I'm just so angry. I, I had him right there. That uh, resist, resisting that confusion spell was really the like thing that kept you all in the game. 
Good move. Well, uh, um, I, I would have killed some motherfuckers. That's uh... yeah. I don't think. Yeah, it wouldn't have been fun to attack Itzel or or Bella or each other or. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or but... What does one of them stare into space or just walk somewhere? <laughs> uh, it, there, yeah. There's like, hey, wander off somewhere, do nothing, attack your friends, or act normal. Um, but as as the dust kind of settles, right. Um, that strange purplish energy that was coming from the statue of Tempest has since disappeared with the lantern. Um, and Father Stone kind of walks over to the statue and like just puts a hand on it to see, you know, and looks at the damage and uh, looks around at the broken windows and the broken pews. Um, and at you holding the Holy Avenger hilt, he says, I think you, uh, I think you got here just in time. Would have killed me on my own. I would, I would drop to a knee holding the Holy Avenger, place one hand on the statue and I'm going to say a prayer. I'm not the best at this as a paladin, but I'm still going to offer Tempest his due in his own house. You say this prayer, uh, and as you go to stand up, you notice that the light in your flaming longsword has gone out. And as you are holding the hilt of this relic, it starts to spark and from it, a blade of radiant fire appears. Um, this beautiful Holy Avengers sword that has now absorbed the power of your flaming longsword into something even greater. Pretty. <laughs> and, uh... I pray more fervent. <laughs> the sword gets bigger. <laughs> just, just a giant Sephiroth sword made of fire. <laughs> so, um, no, so that is that is where we, we will end for now. All right? There's this uh, this whole area, even with the destructions, is bathed in this holy, fiery, radiant light uh, as you're given the blessing of Tempest once again. All right? Nice. So, uh, well done. I definitely thought that combat was going to go a little longer, but you had him on the ropes near the end. So he was so close. Yeah, but uh, that was fun. Well I I I dropped down to fifty four. I was a little worried after that first hit of fucking twenty damage in a single hit, but <coughs> yeah, the Galbrazu does a lot of damage. Um, luckily, he was more interested in destroying the statue than the rest of you. Yeah, no, he's a serious um, demon. Yeah, I, yeah. even I, I am not a, up to date on the lore, and even I've heard of the Glabrizu. <laughs> yes, um, but I'm sure I'm sure he'll never come back again. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's fine. But, he's gone. Hey, we're uh, we're doing all this because we're raising money for Surf Rider, and uh, you know, right now we're at zero advantage tokens for our players. So you know, uh, charity is one thing, but making sure players have advantage at the time of need is another. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I, will, yeah. I, I had I had fun this session. I'm throwing money to the charity. It's, it's <laughs> I'm lining this up for next time. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah. Like, but yeah, hopefully, uh, if y'all watching, you had a great time, right? This is our Discord. We do all that good stuff, right? Get our Twitter channel. Um, all sorts of cool things going on there. But we'll be back in two weeks with this. Uh, Adventurers probably heading out to who knows what and where after this but um you did a great job with this one but uh let's see what's going on this week we got uh class reunion on tuesday mercy time on wednesday if that's correct nice. mm-hmm. uh and then of course um academy h this upcoming weekend so a full schedule but uh let me find a thing to raid so don't go Ooh. anywhere we'll do that and uh I was gonna say, I think oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Joe. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, obviously, uh, Mercy of Time is a very important show, and you you must absolutely watch it. Uh, you you know it also needs viewers, but you don't have to watch it when it comes out uh, Tuesday night um, at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there's that switch. We're an improv group, and we do uh, uh, amazing virtual improv shows. Um, hearkening back uh, to the days of old where you would just like flip through the channels, just regular chan- channel surfing, but completely and utterly beautifully imp- improvised. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can watch it. I would re- I would recommend you watch The Mercy of Time uh, instead. Mercy of Time's on Wednesday, so you can totally oh, catch sorry. them both. Never mind. You can watch, guys, Jeff, this you just in. Both. You can watch both. <laughs> um, uh, they so, are amazing. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, definitely check us out. We're uh, at Hot Switch um, on Facebook or hat, hot, at Hot underscore Switch on Instagram. And I'll drop a little thing right here. It's a long little thing. There we go. Um, but if you're like, I don't have time for social media, that's okay. You can go just straight to the YouTube link and click that and it's going to be amazing you can also just look at the other shows that we put up and you can watch those and like them as well uh follow us on all of those things and we hope to see you heck yeah it's a, it's a fun it's a fun time i appreciate you anybody else get anything go once wednesday is mercy of time uh last time players messed with the uh temporal anomaly and set off a volcano so Ooh. Sounds like some good player nonsense. I love it. We, okay. we hope you had as much fun as we did. Yeah, this is a blast. I had fun. I hope everyone else had a good time. And uh, we're going to go raid Long Lost Lore, who I think they're playing some, some D&D. So uh, you'll see the thanks for watching screen. Don't go anywhere. Uh, just you know, throw them a follow and uh, hang out for a bit. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.